Oh yeah, and we're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flat of Fever, F1 podcast, episode fifty-seven. Welcome everybody to uh, the podcast. To the podcast. So, uh, Flat of Fever podcast. We've we'll been doing this for oh, you know what? You know what? Fifty-seven episodes now. Jeez. Oh my god. Oh my god. And as as usual, you can find us on. Uh, but please subscribe on on YouTube if you're watching this live. Uh, please uh, g- g- give us a shout on Twitter. Follow on Twitter. Yeah, give, give us a follow on Twitter or any your both. preferred give social a shout media and follow. Yeah, and follow. Yeah, both of them. Why not? Uh, and today, today of all days, we, 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 first of all, we're not doing our podcast on a regular day, which no, is Tuesday. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're switching it up. Yeah, it's Monday today. Yeah, yeah I know. But it feels like a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Tuesday feel to the air. Yeah. All the days feel the same to <laughs> Funny thing about weekends when you're unemployed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> following <laughs> days. Following a dying sport. <laughs> um... And we're here with a special episode. That's right. A special one. A very special one. We have... Uh, um, another guest. Another guest. Uh, Mr. Tobias Gruner. Yeah, we've had, we talked to Toby last year. Right around... Well, actually, before the season started with his take from... Uh, yeah, March-ish. Uh, yeah, it was, it was after testing. He gave us his, his opinion, and which ended up being quite accurate, uh, let's be honest, uh, <laughs> of, of how the year was going to go. Either way, uh, great insight. Uh, Toby is a journalist with uh, basically Germany's authoritative voice on motorsport, which is the Automotor und Sport magazine. Automotor und Sport, AMUS. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and and he's, he's, he's a good friend of the podcast. Uh, we're going to try to hopefully get it on, get him on, get it on, <laughs> get him on a few more times uh, this year. Yeah. Um, to get his insight, valuable, valuable insight. It is very, very valuable insight. Mm-hmm. Even though, like, most mo- most of what we did last time around that we had him was just talk about how he got into a fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is all right, which is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was cool. Anyway, and um, uh, so, yeah, he, he will be calling in shortly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I just want to make a quick note. Uh, yeah. So we did some uh, very small audio reworking oh, of, yes. of the podcast thank studio. You, thank you. Uh, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's more or less like, guys, if you're listening, uh, let us know if it's coming in clear, if, you, if there's right. any problems. Uh, it's good to hear from you guys on, on the quality. Make sure we, we give you... Uh, or deliver you a proper podcast experience. Oh my god, we're an experience. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. Um, with that being said, um, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, welcome to the podcast. Uh, I guess so we're, we're, for now, I guess we're just waiting on uh, yeah. Toby to come uh, any second now. Yeah, just waiting. For he this, should be. This he, should, he should be connecting us via wire. Boop, boop. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> um, from Stuttgart, Germany. Um, which is the home of Mercedes. There he is. On point. Hello. Hey guys. Hey Toby. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Yes. We we, the... we read you loud and clear. Yeah. Okay. Because I got a new notebook in December and I never tried out Skype chat to be honest with yeah. you. <laughs> it's working. No idea how it sounds. Yeah. Can you, can you see us? Yeah, I have to yeah, it's get a little... my, my picture out of the way. So, okay, now, now, it's, now I can see you. Okay, cool. There we go. Hey, Toby, good to see you. Good to talk to you again. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you for calling us. Yeah. How, no how, how's, how's the weather in Stuttgart? Oh, if I look outside, it's, it's, it's not like a normal uh, April, you know. It's, it's more like February. It's more like wintertime. Oh, no. Yes, oh. Yesterday we had snow. Oh, what? It's ter- oh, no. It's terribly cold, you know. It's, oh, it's about 40 degrees outside. It's don't, colder don't, than normal, you know. Don't don't Germans have a saying that April does what it wants? Yes, correct. <laughs> yeah, we have different seasons in, in one day. So from sunshine to, to snow, everything can happen in April. In <laughs> well, thanks for calling us. This, this had been a, a long time coming. Uh, we, we, we tried to get something together for earlier last year, but things yeah. came out it came up in the way we really really thank you so much for calling us it's good it's good to talk to you again are those some americans license plates off to this off to your wall there <laughs> yeah yeah they are 
I love traveling to uh, to the United States and through the United States. So, um, yeah, from every state, I pick up a license plate and uh, hang it. <laughs> oh the man, I can, I can carry a wrench. We can, we can carry a wrench with you. I can I can fix you up with a with a with an Ontario license plate next next time we see you. <laughs> yeah, I was there too, but I didn't pick up a license plate. Yeah. <laughs> but downstairs there are another one, uh, a few a few more. You know. Nice. This is just my office here. True. 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 Um. I know that you're not gonna come. The, you're not gonna go. Let's let's get right to it. You're not gonna go yeah. to the next Grand Prix in Russia. No, Russia uh, is not not the best Grand Prix to go to. <laughs> as was China. It's not. It's not my favorite one. You know. So I skipped that one. Yeah. Yeah. No. And and, and obviously that's one of the reasons that we that we're talking right now. Otherwise you'd be getting ready to go on a plane or or, or, or something. Um. But Russia is coming up, and we we do have uh mm-hmm. like a, a, a few. A few of our listeners or whatever are expecting that we at some point or another talk about the upcoming Grand Prix, and I sure. I did want I did want to get your opinion on it because I'm sure yeah like you said there is a reason why you're not coming I'm, I mean I'm and I'm sure that it, that the reason is more than just the overcomplicated visa process to get into Russia. It's everything. It's not no it's it's not like you know I don't like uh, to, to get into a country with uh, restricted press uh, freedom or something like that. You know it's. It's just the overall experience in, in Russia is not, you know, it's it's very hard to get there, you know, the, the, there are not many different flight connections, you have to arrive very late and, and, and leave very early or stay a day longer and then there's the visa process and, um, yeah, uh, Sochi is very, it's just a little, a small town, you know, you, you can't see a lot and the, the food is not to my tasting, you know. It's, <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I'm doing I'm doing only ten ten uh, races this year, and if I can choose, I I'd rather choose choose other ones and let my colleagues go go there. You know. Yeah. So the, the, I, I've been to to Australia and and uh, Bahrain, so they're much better. Oh I have yeah. To say. Food it's not that I, I don't like Russia. I, I I have only seen Sochi, you know, and it's, <laughs> it's 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 nice. The Olympic venue is quite nice, but the track is a bit boring. I have to say, you know, it's. Um, yeah. It's it's not that I don't like Russia in in general, you know, but uh, Sochi is not for a Formula One journal, journalist. It's not an overwhelming overwhelming experience to go there every year. And track was more yeah. of an afterthought there. Yeah, where they yeah. built it. But yeah. but but like you said, you you you've been already to the first two races, which were yeah. really really good, quite exciting. The third one was good as well. Oh, the third one was great. Most yeah. overtakes in the F one history. Too bad you had to yeah. sit through those first two qualifyings, but <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't that bad. It was, you know, it, everyone, everyone was was uh, was looking forward to see just to see what what happens, you know. Yeah. In the end, it was a disappointment, you know. But yeah. we were still excited, you know, and and we said even it was so so bad, it was actually, you know, it was so bad. At, at least we had something to write about, you know. And, and <laughs> our, our readers, they they discussed on our website, they, they wrote comments under under those those articles. So, um, yeah, it, it it was so bad that actually it got got so much attention, you know, that it was it was what, so bad was it was good somehow good. good yeah, somehow <laughs> it was good. And and in the end, the the races were good uh, due yeah, to the this qualifying because Mercedes had to start on the on the softer tires, you know, right. on the softest tire. And and so the races got, I think, the races got more exciting because of it. And we saw in China, uh, Mercedes was able to go through Q Q two with the with the harder tire, harder tire, and that made it pretty easy for for Nico Rosberg in the in the race. So I think going back to last year's qualifying is is a big advantage for Mercedes, and it could make uh, races uh, boring again, you know. Yeah. But we have a more exciting qualifying, so you have to say, yeah, <laughs> you, you can only have one, you know. Maybe it would have been better to leave Q2, you know, like uh, the old way. I don't know. You know, I know that m- many fans, they were just, just against it, uh, anything uh, new. So uh, Maybe that was part of Bernie's uh, master plan. He just created yeah. this hype and then he's like, yes, I, I, yes. I, I, don't, I don't have the, the perfect solutions, you know. But, yeah. but you have to say uh, every, every, uh, every mode, qualifying mode... Uh, it's his, his advantage and ad, advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't There's think no perfect solution. I don't think anybody can like speak very like you know with, with any authority on what Bernie's plan is. I don't think I don't think Bernie has a, a plan other than brush his teeth. Like you know, <laughs> further than that, he's probably just rolling the dice. Whatever comes, oh yeah, yeah. I got I got power units for everybody. I got races <laughs> for everybody. Dishing them out. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Toby. One thing that I wanted to ask 
you like still from 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 the those previous races as as a person that was there in the paddock and saw it happening uh, specifically for Bahrain how was Stoffel van Dorn and how was the people and how was people's reactions to how good he performed and he outperformed Jensen Button yeah, he definitely did a good job. You, you, you know, you, can, you cannot criticize this, especially um, if I were McLaren, I knew that uh, Fernando Alonso uh, was somehow hurt, you know, and there was at least a, a little bit of risk uh, that he couldn't race. I would have uh, gotten Van Dorn earlier to Bahrain, you know. He, he arrived there on Friday morning, I guess, and he did his homework, you know, learning all the procedures on the plane from, from Japan because <laughs> yeah. he was doing... Uh, Super Formula test there, you know. Yeah. So uh, I don't know how much uh, sleep he, he had on that on that overnight uh, <laughs> flight, you know. And uh, and Enough. then he he had a few a few issues with the brake by wire during free practice, but you know in the race it was it was yeah. It, 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 I can't find anything, you know, to, to criticize him. And, mm. But people, you know, you, you more or less expected it from him, you know. If last year we we saw him all in GP two and what he what he did there, so. Uh, <laughs> This guy is definitely Formula One material, you know, yeah, maybe yeah. champion material. You you can't you, you can't judge that, that from just from GP two in one race in Formula One, but you know he he didn't put a foot wrong, you know. For, for, in my opinion, you know, he has proven that he he got it all, you know. But he he has to find a drive, you know, for next year maybe a, yeah. a good car, not just a manner, you know, to 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 show that then what he can really do, you know. But but th but, th but then that brings the question. Listen, if you're Ron Dennis, if you or or, or Mansour Roger or whatever, uh, at McLaren, and you have two seats right now, as things stands, mm -hmm. who do you keep? Do you keep Alonso or do you keep yeah. Button? Yeah, you have to keep Alonso. You know, Alonso is just it, it's the name. It's it's everything. You know, it, 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 Alonso is the guy. You know, if you want to know what the car is capable of doing, you have to you have to. Have a guy like Alonso, you know, a two-time world champion. You know, he's he's still recognized as as one of the best, maybe the best. You know, with right up there with uh, with Hamilton and Vettel and, and and all of them. You have to keep him to have a, a benchmark, you know. But um, I like Jensen Button a lot, you know. Yeah. But I I don't know if he is, and and he he still is a good racer, you know. He he showed that last year, you know, beating Alonso in the in, in the points category. But um, I think you can have Van Dorn for a much cheaper price, <laughs> and um, yeah, you, you you can have Jensen if you want the, the you know the the image because the, Jensen is a great guy you know and for for sponsors you know they 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 ra they'd rather have have Jensen for sure than than, than Stoffel. But um, I think um, in this this case, um, if I were on Dennis, I I would give Stoffel a, a, a chance. But, but I, hope, I, hope, I, I hope I hope that I was there at uh, some some press rounds with with Stoffel and he's you know he's a young guy he's he's not used to all the journalist stuff and you know, he's he's still a bit careful you know and 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 Jensen is much more outspoken if you ask him about uh, yeah. political stuff or, or other stuff he, he gives you much much better quotes you know um, co more <laughs> controversial quotes. And it's it's the beauty hope, of having nothing to lose. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and you know Stoffel he's you know he's he's a little bit you know. How, how should I say? You know, he's he has to grow into this role, you know, first. So, and if if I write a story about Jensen Button, I will get more more traffic on my website than if I write a, I write a story about Stoffel van Dorn. But you know, he, he's he's young and he can evolve definitely, and I, I would give him a chance for sure. I was gonna say on on that topic, it's interesting in the last couple of weeks all the negative stories coming out about Alonso, about. Uh, He's, he should retire. He's, yeah, he's people, not performing people anymore. People think that he's too old somehow. Because somehow 34, 35 now is too old for yeah. Formula One. And then the headline today, the making a big deal about how he had his eyes closed during the accident. Yeah. <laughs> but that, 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 that says nothing. Yeah. Yeah. nothing I, so I, said, I, I would close my eyes too. <laughs> I think yeah. it's just like a natural thing. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we had what uh, we had what what was uh, on this on this high speed camera and it's it's uh, but people told us they uh, people that that saw more of those, those accidents they say it's not uncommon you know that people that that uh, the visor gets open if you're upside down you know the, through the the g forces it's it's it's, it's a normal thing yeah. and you know if my visor would open during a, such a high high speed crash I would yeah, yeah. I would do whatever you know uh, yeah. my, my hands 
I don't know what I would do, you know, but not it's not like a roller coaster, you know, <laughs> smile, you know for, for the camera, stuff like that. You know, it's, uh, it, it, it must have been a scary moment. So Yeah, yeah but to, to me, it and, just seems and, like an excuse for a negative headline about a lot. No. So. No, no, you, you should you shouldn't do any headline about that you know it's just it's just yeah. interesting for fans exactly. you know how we how what what was on that that camera because it, mm -hmm. you know it's the first season with this camera and it, it was the first first crash you know that was recorded uh, yeah, everybody wants camera. to see the video that video yeah of course but then you know the, the guys from fia they will probably will not release this unfortunately that's yeah. so but that's we, we, yeah, we just, we just keep it to themselves there, you know we, we, we didn't see it ourselves unfortunately but we had you, you also can see how much how much the the helmet was was banged against the, the crash structure you know there's they have this kind of styrofoam uh, the, uh structure um, around like, your yeah. uh, protection structure around your head um yeah and he, he banged his head pretty good against that one yeah 47 G's or something. Yeah. Yeah, I have that. I have that as well. More than 40. And it, when they were, there were two uh, two impacts. You know, the first impact when he when he hit the wall. Yeah. And then the other other, uh, you know, after he after he rolled after the car, the gravel, so he had yeah. he had the four, more than 40 G's twice. That's why what I heard. Yeah. But okay, so wow. He, he, here's the thing, because uh, because I I, I want to say something because a lot of tracks are getting their gravel traps resurfaced yeah. right like yeah. paved over so if if this track <laughs> in particular if um uh, uh, uh what australia? was australia yeah. had had that corner paved over for the motorcycles we wouldn't have had such a spectacular accident let's be honest he probably would, would have just like <laughs> rolled hit the wall at some speed maybe but the, yeah. the but the car the car would have probably stayed upright yeah uh, i'm not sure about that i think he already rolled uh, when he hit the wall, you know, he rolled yeah. uh, over the over the wheel because the wheel, the wheel tethers kept the kept the wheel close to the to the chassis. Okay. And then they they got tangled up, and then the car rolled over the, over the wheel because um, that's it's like last year with uh, Sergio Perez. You know, the, remember the the accident in uh, in Hungary in free practice? It was just uh, very slow on very slow um, velocity. Okay. You know, very slow speeds. He was um, he he rolled the car, and that's that's the problem with the with wheel tethers. They keep the car keep the wheels to the car, and then the car can roll over them. And I think the car would would have rolled over even without the without uh, the gravel trap. Yeah, because oh, he hit the wall, and there was this little um, grass strip in mm -hmm. front of the wall. Yeah. I think he rolled already there. I don't know what would happen then with the if, if it would if it would have been. Um, paved you know maybe he's, he would have slid on the on the roll hoop or if the car if he if would would land it on the other side i have no idea it's just that, that is speculation for sure you know. yeah but, but there are there are certain advantages and disadvantages with gravel traps and 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 paved ones so yeah on, on different on certain accidents one is better than the other so um, yeah but FIA is, uh, has the opinion that uh, in most cases um, the paved one is, paved is, uh, is safer. It's the safer option, you know. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But 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 there's there's definitely a, a line to tug there, and this uh, this was for a while the discussion at the beginning of the year of where do you stop over regulating for 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 health and safety, um, safety in particular. Alonso walked away from that crash, and like he's mm -hmm. he's still around. He's still today. He's fit to race. Let's say, mm -hmm. with with a with a brace or whatever, but he's still fit to race. Yeah. Um. Do do we still like? To to what point do you think? The like the energy of the people at the FIA should be spent on thinking things up like that, like the halo solution yeah. or this, or whether you should focus your energies back on fixing the sport you know what i mean on on making yeah. sure that that the sport is sustainable in the long term in my opinion you know the the, the safety is, still, is is just good enough what we have right now you know i'm not a, not a fan of this halo thing or even that that red bull, red bull solution you know i'm um, in my opinion they can get rid of everything they uh, they destroy the look of the car you can't see the helmet you can't see what the driver is doing you know behind the wheel I, I don't like it uh, to be honest, but um, yeah, the drivers are most of the drivers are in favor of it. Um, I'm, I'm yeah, I, 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 
I feel that some fans or most of the fans, you know, you can see that that from from uh, some votings, online votings, they don't like it either. And they, if they see next year's car and they are all running around with those halos and they say, what shit is that, you know, and, and then <laughs> yeah. more, even, even more will turn off the TV, you know, like, because we lost already uh, some fans in the last year. So uh, I would say they should get rid of it or they, they should not introduce it or they, sh they should wait until they found, you know, a, a nicer solution, you know. I know that Alex Woods and the drive, there, there are many drivers, they, they say we need something now. And, you know, and if, if something happens next year, you know, if there's a, uh, if there's an accident um, that could have pre prevented by, by, an, by a halo, you know, yeah. you would have, you would look, you would look stupid, you know, if, if, yeah. if you had prevented uh, the introduction of that, mm -hmm. you know, so they don't want uh, to accept the risk, you know, and so it probably will introduce, but I'm not a fan of it. And, for me, Formula One is safe enough. You have to you have to live with with a certain certain risk rest risk you know risk that's there. That's Formula One. You know, it's not it's not like golfing. You know, um, <laughs> it's it's a it's a high speed sport. And if something goes wrong, you know, you can you can hurt yourself like you, you yeah. saw with Alonso. But right. for me, Formula One is safe enough. You you can try to improve the tracks. You know, and you can pave all the all the gravel traps. You know, but leave the cars open and let us see the, the helmets and, and let, let them be Formula One cars, you know, that, that, yeah. that we are used to, that we love, you know, and don't make, make a different sport out of it. Right. That, that's my opinion, you know, but I can understand the other, the other, uh, other view on it, but, you know, I, I fear that some, we will lose some fans, uh, even more fans next year. It's looking like uh, this, in the past week now, Red Bulls announced, looks like they're going to test their version of yeah. the halo the canopy at russia this weekend i don't know they're trying to make theirs a little cooler with the glass yeah calling it a jet canopy but yeah i don't know i think it looks a bit cooler but i i, I see the risk you know because uh, the the halo has it has this the pillar center, right in yeah. front of the eyes you know and uh it's uh, what i've what i've heard is that this the center pillar is better because you you just you know if you focus uh, the view 100 meter in front of you you don't see it you know but if you if you uh, turn your head like in Eau Rouge, you know, and you have to uh, look look to the left or to the right, you know, it depends on the corner entry, you know. Yeah. It's this 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 Red Bull solution with the two pillars on the side, they they could irritate irritate the driver the driver, and especially in corners like Eau Rouge, you don't a you, you want you want to see everything what's in uh, in front of the car. A few days ago, now Red Bull put a an updated version of their canopy. They put the two pillars a bit further back. But yeah, it's still, okay. it's still, it looks pretty much the same. They just move the pillars a little yeah. bit back, but it looks very similar. It's almost, it's almost uh, like let's, let's see. We have, we have to hear what the drivers say. So we'll see on they, Friday, I guess. If they like, if they, if they like it, you know, or what they like better, we'll and then we have to see what the what the FIA says. Um, they have to uh, make a decision very quick, you know, because the the cars for next soon, year, are, yeah. yeah. Our cars for next year are, are still uh, under development, you know, and, and yeah, now April. we have now we have to, to get the regula regulations fixed, you know. Five days, to, April 30th yeah. is in five days. Yeah, yeah. But is yeah, it's, it's everything, you know, the, the white cars, the white tires, uh, every, every dimensions, you know. Yeah, but but that, it, 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 it's getting some pushback. Uh, Total Wolf was quoted as saying that he thinks that there shouldn't be any changes yeah. for 2017. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I could, from the point of view of the leading manufacturer and the guy that's getting one, you know, first places at every race, I can, I can see yeah. why you would want stability because then you can just keep winning. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I know, I know it's, 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 it's again, it's a, it's a point where, where there's, where there's no perfect solution, you know? Also, not it's not only Mercedes, also smaller teams, they don't want, want this new uh, regulations, the wider cars, they say. Because it will definitely uh, hurt ra racing, you know, cars will be become quicker. More aero downforce means uh, following each other is is more difficult. Yeah, Overtaking yeah. Is, is is of course more difficult. So I'm not sure. You know, it's it's um, of of course you know it's uh, everything that could 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 stir up the um, um, uh, the Mercedes dominance. You know, uh, would be a good thing right yeah. now, but. I'm, first of all, I, I'm not sure this will achieve this. Um, the other point is cars will become uh, four, five, six seconds uh, uh, quicker per lap. But 
you as a fan, you, you will not see that anyways, you know, on TV, you, you, you can't see if a car is five no. seconds quicker a uh, lap or not. Um, I'm not sure that cars will look cooler, of, uh, for sure. You know, if cars are wider, it's always good. If tires are wider, it looks better. Um, the wings, wider the tires power, is, wider is, wings again. Yeah, the, the wider wings, the front wheel, front wing might might look a bit ridiculous. You will see. <laughs> <laughs> really, is exciting to see the first pics of the car, the next, next of the real cars next year. You know, you, you have, it's like 2009. You know, when we first saw those cars, you know, and we were used to the old ones. We saw, we, we the thought back we were yeah. used to it. You know, with the with the high wings and the high, high rear wing and the it looks the normal small, to me now. The, the, the narrow and, and high rear wing, and we thought. Mm, no, no, no. no. <laughs> what shit is that? You know, now we all got used to that, and, and next year the, the front wing will become even even more wide. But it, it, it looks normal now, right? So. It it looks it looks fine now. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 I think all all experts um, now realize that the, the perfect solution would be just to just to uh, increase mechanical grip. You know, just. Um, just wider tires and maybe a, um, a bigger bigger diffuser on the end because because um, that don't that doesn't affect um, the close racing too much or, or or like like you know like bigger front wing or, or bigger bigger uh, chassis surface you know so to have to have more aero downforce on on top of the car but you know they they now found this solution or this this compromise with a uh, uh, one one meter sixty cars white white chassis cars so. Yeah, I probably I think they will go through with it, and um, I don't think they will go. The, my, for my opinion, they should at least they should wait one year and again one. I know that fans, if they if they hear, oh, they, they 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 didn't decide anything, you know, and and we have, still have to wait one year, and, <laughs> and they say, oh, they 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 cannot decide anything, and we'll criticize yeah. criticize it again. But um, but, I, but I think 2018. 2018 will be more meaningful though because they could do yeah. en engine changes as well as chassis changes for both but but en engine changes won't come uh, engine no. formula changes you know that that's 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 out of the window already maybe we will have those you know maybe those, 2020 uh, yeah 2020 2020 four more years that yeah, makes more that's, sense that's that's what what i think probably for the next engine change uh, engine formula change you know we will have uh New engine and engine regulation for 2018 with the um, with the cheaper engines maybe yeah um, yeah and um, like red and red the bull three engines a year maybe obligation to supply you know but yeah I'm I'm curious to see I want to decide that uh, too now on this uh, strategy group meeting to, I think it's tomorrow yeah the day after tomorrow and the, the Formula One commission meeting you know. I, I'm not sure, you know, because Ron Dennis, he was uh, very much against it, you know, because he wanted to, to have the exclusive, um, the exclusive partner uh, by Honda. Yeah, yeah. Honda, yeah. And he, he fought, you know, he really fought hard against it, you know. And, really? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm, and till, till, till the last races, you know, I, I don't think or I, I have no information if he changed his mind, you know, in the, in the last days or, or weeks. So I'm very, very curious to see what, what will happen there tomorrow or in the next next strategy group meeting if they if they really find the find a solution for for all the for all the open questions you know and yeah let's let's wait and see we will we will, we will know uh, in, in a few days yeah. on the 30th is supposed to be decided the obligation to supply rule is supposed to be yeah. agreed yeah, this week on, yeah. on they have to, all, yeah otherwise yeah. otherwise paul hembry takes his show out of the road <laughs> paul hembry takes pirelli out what what is, what, what is that all happen. about? What like what I, I they don't they don't want to to leave F one, do they? No, they don't want. No. They don't want to leave F one. But you know they got they got a lot of bad publicity in, in the last years with a with a uh, the, with the tire punctures. You know last year with uh, with Vettel in, uh, in in Spa and 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 the criticism by the drivers afterwards. And the criticism was not just about about those those punctures or. Exploding tires, you know, it was just a general criticism of of tires not not giving enough grip and 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 uh, yeah, um, degrading too uh, too early and not not const in a constant manner, you know. So yeah. they they want they just want better tires, and they they made it clear to Pirelli that they want they want to have tires that they that behave in a, in, a, in, a, in a better way, you know. They made a more like racing what, tires. <laughs> what they expect. Yeah, they, they made a list what to expect from the tires and what Pirelli has to deliver for next year. And yeah, but but for Pirelli, is Formula One is still 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 a good uh, showcase to uh, you know, for for the road road tires. You know, they I think they it, it 
it's, it's good pub in general it's a good publicity you know every everybody knows that Pirelli is building formula one tires and right. the, yeah. the the markings are very nice you know with the with the different colors and i think they they like being in formula one and, and having the the attention and yeah but but you know um the, the teams are not making it easy for uh, for Pirelli, as you can see now with the with the testing for next year yeah. with all the with all the issues uh, that we had and yeah and I, I think there will be lots a lot of lot of more um, will be more discussions uh, as the year goes on as teams have to build those special cars you know to to simulate uh, 2017 I don't I don't know cars. if you, you you didn't see it I think it was today was now agreed that Pirelli will get for 2016, 17, yeah. and 18, 25 days testing yeah. in a current car. The current yeah. year car. No, in, yeah, in, in current cars and in, in modified cars. They can, yeah, both, they can, do both. They can pretty much, uh, for next year, they can pretty much test what they want. Whatever, know, in, yeah, whatever they in want. In those tw 25, 25 days, you know. But it's uh, a lot of testing. That's I, good. In, during testing. Yeah, they had to have additional testing days, which is good. But there will, there's a question what. Um, um, how how good are those cars? You know how um, um, how good can you test next year's tires? Because you don't know how much downforce next yeah. year's cars will have, how big the loads are, and what the tires need to uh, need, need to pressures. handle. You know, so it will be interesting. And all the teams, of course, they want because in in the early test they will have old tires with a new structure, a new construction, and then they they have the first prototype tires and only the last prototype tires for, uh, in the end of the season you know they they will give you a good impression of uh, what to expect from uh, from next year's tires so of course those teams testing tires for pirelli they want to have the test days in uh, as late as possible you know right. for for mercedes or for red bull or who, who else is there they don't want to test for pirelli in august they want to test for pirelli in uh, in november when the when the tires are, are much more like next year's tires so i think they will we will connect we can expect some some more discussions who who can test uh, test the latest and so but yeah it will be interesting very interesting <laughs> absolutely i mean yeah. we, we've been saying for a long time that i mean from us as as fans as, as third person viewers of the sport it just seems that out of all the unprofessional behavior that there is up and down the paddock it seems like only pirelli is consistently the only the professional, professional or yeah. the most professional company in f1 because <laughs> you, yeah you never catch them lying you never catch them trying to stir up sh well maybe once or twice <laughs> stir, to stir up some shit but they just sort of come and show up do their job that they were asked to do really they were told to do make these tires so that they don't last and yeah <laughs> the problem yeah if you look now compared yeah, to five years ago after the race the marbles everywhere yeah <laughs> they'd but... be sweeping for days after the, every race to be, yeah, to be honest, I, I I like Pirelli. I like like those guys from Pirelli. They they they're, they're, they're cool guys, you know. And and um, and, and they have a re really difficult job, you know, building those tires that that don't last, you know, and get yeah. get all the criticism for uh, tires that that you know that you have to go to the pits after 10, 10 laps, you know, and and to, we have to explain that. But yeah, that's what they were asked to. And I, it's the only solution, you know. I know that drivers they want tires that. Uh, more or less last the whole race and you can go flat out uh, all the race you know and have fun with those tires you know like an endurance racing yeah. um, but on the other hand the tires have to be a bit more consistent you know they are um, they behave sometimes they behave strange and behind the scenes you know if you talk to drivers uh, they tell you a lot of them tell you they're not they're not that happy with Pirelli you know with the job Pirelli does uh, with the tires but from one set to another you you feel differences and in, in quality and yeah on, on some tracks you know in different uh, conditions with temperatures and stuff like that so um you will never hear them in public because you know if, if if a driver openly criticizes pirelli he he gets a, a date with the with the pirelli guys you know, and, and has, to, has to explain like last year after the, after the spa accident and when when sebastian fettel was very open um openly criticizing them not only because of the puncture you know there was a big meeting with uh, with uh, bernie afterwards in the next race in uh, in monza and um, yeah the drivers basically they got told to shut their mouth you know mm -hmm. to be to be quiet and that not criticize the, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the tire supplier you know to if um, yeah. if you look on youtube you can see some videos in the pirelli factory they give you a tour how the tires are made by hand you see yeah. you see the people that make them 
you can see there's a lot of potential for every tire to be different <laughs> when you see how they do it they just kind of have a big roll of rubber and they just kind of yeah. like wrap wrap the rubber around the tire a few times <laughs> cut it off it's kind of like yeah, it could it be a different thickness every tire could be a little one oh, or two layers thicker. a lot of those yeah the, a lot a, a lot of the tire itself is basically handmade basically yeah, very yeah. almost bespoke. No, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to, to criticize. Really <laughs> we know we're not criticizing. Not, I love them. I do love them. You know, it's it's just, uh, I'm um, just making a statement. No, we <laughs> we, we heard uh, Roman Grosjean in uh, in China uh, last week. You know, uh, criticizing the higher high tire pressure limits. Yeah. So yeah. and that's that's criticized by by a lot of teams. You know, they they think. Pirelli is uh, too, safer than they safe, yeah. they should be, you know. But that, but that was that that came from like that was a directive from the FIA. They told Pirelli, from Vettel, like, you, yeah, yeah, like Spa last yeah, year. from Spa last year. They told it, him yeah, you have to no, be. The, they, they, yeah, they told him to to run their tire safely. But uh, Pirelli now says to run the tire tire safely, we have to uh, to increase tire pressures. The tire pressures are given by Pirelli and not by the FIA. The FIA just it's just right. it's just. Uh, controlling them you know they are checking the, the cars if they are within the limits right. but Pirelli is giving the tire pressures and you know teams they are saying this this is not what you know what we have built our cars for you know when we when we build the cars we expected much uh, much uh, uh, yeah, less less tire pressure so uh, pressure limits so um, yeah um, it, it gets criticized a lot uh, by by engineers um, Pirelli is playing it too safe you know because they just want to pre prevent uh, any failures at all and they should they should go go down again that's 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 what's said what's said by the engineers but yeah what can you say because it's another thing that fans will never see you know you in the tv you don't see if the if the tire if tire pressures are two or three psi higher or, or, or lower you, you don't see that yeah. but the, but the driver can feel it and you can and you can also see that uh, on the lap time you know with with uh, less less tire pressures, uh, lap times would, would be even 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 better. You know, we saw in Bahrain already uh, a new lap record, right, and yeah. that was with, amazing with, to see. Yeah, with, with last year's cool tire pressures, engineers told me uh, the the lap time would be at least one second slow, uh, uh, quicker. You know? No. So um, yeah, the high tire pressures are you know you just have less grip, um, and for drivers it's, it's 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 very difficult to get used to, and also for engineers. Yeah, so Pirelli should Pirelli should be able to to build a tire that that can cope with uh, with lower tire pressure pressures, you know, like like they did in uh, in, in in former seasons, you know, maybe yeah. for for twenty two um, whatever for 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 tracks like Spa or, or Monza you can increase them, but not for a track like uh, like China, you, then there should be another a better solution. You know? Well, I guess because of the lead time and because everything's changing for next year, you would don't expect them to fix it for. A, the rest of the season it's going to be high pressure no, yeah, yeah i think i think the rest this, of 2016. this year will stay more or less the same maybe if, if they see um the tires are looking good maybe they, they go a bit a bit more a bit more down but yeah i i don't know but you can see with the uh, with sochi now with the tire uh with the tire choice they have with the super soft soft and medium they are they're again on the uh, conservative side you know they could you, you you saw it last year we had last year super soft and soft there and uh, people were running a one-stop race easily you know doing more yeah. than 40 laps on on a set of super soft so they could they they normally you would say they should have brought uh, the the, the ultra soft you know the, the new the new softer tire to to get us a bit more action they just want to you know, save it for monaco to be extra <laughs> cool yeah yeah <laughs> i don't know why they did it you know but I expect a very boring race in, in terms of tires, at least you know. What for Russia? No, nope. yeah, for Russia, yeah. Because but hey, nobody will, nobody, nobody will run the medium tire. You can no. see that from the tire selection. Right. You know, I, I think only the the Manor guys selected more than one one uh, medium set. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. No, no one will want does want to uh, want to run the, uh, those tires. But how cool is it that we now have three compounds in the car? I mean, I know that this this. Just a lot of people, a lot of like older fans, don't agree with this. They say that it's a bit too artificial, like DRS or whatever. But I, I for one, and we've been talking about this since last I year. I love it. More like more different, like more different compounds means different, like different strategies that everybody can take, and that has already given us. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that more than more than DRS could have more than uh, a shuffled qualifying could have. I think just introducing yeah. one more set of, of of new tires gave us more complex strategy during the race so far than we've seen 
yeah yeah that that's definitely a good thing you know that we, we saw that from the from the first first race in australia already that that you can that we have a lot of different strategies as i said russia will be a bit different because because we won't see the those medium tires a lot unless but, it rains uh, that, <laughs> oh, already <laughs> already already the first three races showed that, that this was definitely the right decision and with the with the with the elimination qualifying with you know with the first eight on on the softest tires uh, with the, the the used tires it would have been probably even better but you know i can understand that we won't that we don't want to have the those qualifying back but um yeah that, that this was definitely a good idea of course there are always those uh, traditional formula one fans they say yeah we have we, they have to be boring races as well you know because like in football or soccer uh, say or ice hockey i don't know you have you have boring matches as well you know yeah. it's not yes. like not, and yeah. we saw yeah, MotoGP, sure. you know i don't know if you follow that in MotoGP, we had a pretty boring race uh, last weekend so it's not only formula one we have but i think uh, from yeah from last year all the time we had one boring race you know hell broke loose and people were saying we need no we need new rules and, and new um, new stuff you know to to make it spicy again more exciting mm. uh it's always with formula one i think it's a bit more special people uh, expect more entertainment more uh, yeah don't know you know more action oh, but yeah, they're, right. suppo they're supposed to be the grand prix right, right. they're the, yeah. the greatest price right yeah. of, of each country yeah. is supposed yeah. to be that and we to a certain right? to a certain degree I mean, I, in, an, in an ideal world, and I think this is what every 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 old school Formula One fan wants F1 to go back to the heyday, but they just they, they don't know what they want about it, right? Because yeah. we can't we can't just go back and yeah. like have uh, the, the, the the those silly cards with the skirts and the ground effect. We can't go back to that because no. engineers can't unlearn what they've already learned. No, right. The, the, yeah. the, Problem of today's Formula One is the you know is is that everything's perfect you know there there are no mistakes you know if you if you remember the 80s or the, or the early 90s yeah. the, the cars broke down engines broke down you saw you saw drivers making much much more mistakes you know with with Michael Schumacher you, yeah. there there was this this uh, you know um, driver training got much more professional you know they were, they they got fitter they got physically fitter they yeah. got um, they uh, the, the driver training the uh, in 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 younger years you know from mentally from fitter too yeah everything everything is controlled now then we yeah have uh, the, the data uh, now nowadays you know that engineers can con control everything cars won't break down they can test in the in the factory they can test everything so you don't see unexpected results on the track cars cars Break down, won't, uh, will not break down unexpectedly. Drivers, driver mistakes are much more, um, much much more rare, much much more rarely. I don't know. Rare, um, rare, yeah, it's rare. much more rare. Sorry, uh, it, it's it's it has to be uh, more boring, you know, nowadays. So you have to you have to find different things. Already in the in the early two thousands, you know, with the, with the Michael Schumacher days in in Germany, people, if you ask people, how oh, we want those good old times with uh, Michael Schumacher back, you know, when when he was at Ferrari, it was exciting and all was good, and you know, and, and then I remember I remind them. Hey, the, the, those those races were really boring. I could I could I could I could have, I could have told you who who will be world champion after the first practice in 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 Australia. You know, it was it was it was so boring. Races were were so dull. You know, you, no overtakings. Um, no. Driver on pole position was was winning the race, like with uh, with refueling. You know, if oh you ask God, refueling. <laughs> ask if you ask ask fans if you want refueling back. Oh, they'll they, say nah. yes. They will say yes because they have those uh, explosions, you Fire, know, those fireballs, fires in the pit lane in mind, and but all, that and only the, happened a couple times. Yeah, that only happened a couple of times. All, all those hoses, you know, they they got stuck in the car. And th those it had happened, but you know, races were uh, really the races were boring in those days. Yeah, but, you you, you know, didn't over you you only overtook short, in the in the pits. Have a short memory, you know. Yeah. Like Vett Vettel's overtook in the pits last week. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, but no, last week was, was an the highest race. overtakes in every ra of every yeah, race. No, ra races, races, races are, racing is, is, is good, and it's not just good this year. I, in my opinion, it was good uh, already since 2009. We, we could see with DRS and, and, uh, and Pirelli tires. It, it definitely got better than in the, in the years before, you know. You can see it's a bit a bit artificial and 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 stuff like that and it and it, it's not like drivers you know they, they get out of the car and you can see that they they, they hardly collapse because of the, the exhaustion you know and 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 
and they go flat out uh, um, every every corner, you know. But it's not you, you can you can't have that anymore in Formula One. People would 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 turn off the the TV even even more, you know, even even quicker if if you know before the start what will go with the what will be happening, you know. Because with the refueling, uh, the race is you have uh, much less fuel in in the car, much, yes. much less weight, so the car is much more like in qualifying. And uh, right. um, the, the, the 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 car on pole position. It's not only the, the fastest car in qualifying; it's also the fastest car in the race. So right. you don't have the two disciplines. So nowadays, that there's the, the chance that that, some, that something will will happen during the race is much higher. You know, when the cars have yeah. the cars in at the, in the beginning of the race, they were they weigh they have 100 kilos of fuel on board, mm -hmm. and and the, at the end of the race, uh, nearly nothing. You know, so the and you can't have a setup that's perfect for for every of the race and you can you have you, you see some cars are quicker in the beginning and some cars are better uh, in the end of the race especially you can the single paddle like, clutch now too sorry the single paddle clutch now as yeah. well affecting yeah. that yeah it, it definitely helped you know it, it, it got got it got starts a bit more unpredictable you know it's everything that uh, uh, helped this year you know with the tires and, and the clutch and and yeah we have to see it um i think the the, the, the the product, the product that is Formula One, you know, the the, um, the 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 sport that it is today, the 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 racing that that it implies, the product that is F1 today is very good. Yes, it's it's right now we've been proven it's, it's very very good, but I also don't disagree with you, Toby, that audiences will continue, or at least recorded television audiences yeah. will continue to go down. Yeah, and. Yeah. That is the, pri the, 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 the primary motive of all this chaos that's happening at the top is because the, the Formula One model right now is built on television audiences, purely and simple. Like you, you, yeah. Bernie, Bernie FOM has, he From distributes, the, 90s too. Yeah, he distributes the, the feeds out and he lets the, the, the broadcasters do the job. But these are TV broadcasters. That is something that worked before and it's not working now because – Say say what you will. Yes, the the measured television audience of Formula One will probably go down. Even if this year, even if twenty sixteen yeah. is the most exciting year in Formula One yeah. ever by everyone's recollection, even if we will, television audiences will come down because television audiences are coming down in the world, as a, a, everywhere in every single country that you measure. So now the question, like the the, the question becomes, does is F one equipped? Is is the governance of F one equipped? To make the changes that it needs to to be sure that F1 survives a post television world. And I think some people are disagreeing with Bernie right now at a very, very, very high level where he wants to take the sport versus where they want to take the sport. Mm. And one of the most vocal persons of that was Sergio Marchione, or is Sergio Marchione, chief yeah. of, uh, of Ferrari, chief of uh, Fiat Chrysler. And there was a very inter interesting article written by your mentor, Michael Schmidt, uh, about how the, 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 the manufacturers want to see Bernie out by, 20, yeah. by, by the end of by this, by year. Of this like, year. Like this year. Wow. Because yeah. I think, and then, and then when we were talking about this story, it's like, I think that maybe right by now people have thought that people were thinking, oh, you know, maybe one day Bernie will die, but he's not dying. <laughs> so, <laughs> probably not now. Not in the near future. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I mean, j j just for our listeners and our viewers here, yeah. um, because I thought that that article was very interesting. I only read it yeah. with Google Translate. I don't speak German at all. <laughs> but, I am sorry about that. No, it's, it's no, but it, it it was very good. And I know that Michael Schmidt has has a very yeah. authoritative voice. He knows what he's talking about. Could you like, just take us through, like, what 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 does he mean? What what was uh, it, the gist? It, yeah, the, 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 it's it, the, this plan is definitely there. You know, they 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 um. They ask, or they will ask um, CBC, you know, um, to to get rid of Bernie by, by the end of the year. But <laughs> it's not it's not like they're worried about state of Formula One, you know, like like you know Bernie's talk, talking bullshit or coming up with <laughs> stupid ideas <laughs> every two hours. It's uh, it's 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 a bit more than that. It's 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 also in case of Ferrari, it's all it's also about this uh, EU thing, you know, this. Um, oh yeah. Mar um, Mar Mar yeah. Margaret Vestager, her yeah, department. This, this uh, competition <laughs> law investigation, you know, into Formula One. Really, it and seems like Bernie wants the EU Commission to win now. 
Yeah. He wants. He wants. <laughs> Bernie wants right to now, lose now. against the EU Commission. Yeah. He wa he wa yeah. He wants. He, he wants to lose. The, the, the problem. <laughs> he, he will lose nothing. You know. It's. Uh, it's just. Uh, yeah. It's just an opportunity to to rip up those those contracts. You know. The Concord Agreement the with Concord the teams. Agreement, you know. Yeah. Cause, yeah. He didn't realize that how how powerful the manufacturers got. You know. How powerful the big teams got. You know. And you can't decide anything. You know. On your own. You. you and. You, you no. Know, you. You can't decide anything. Uh, full stop, you know, because because there are so many parties right now with this uh, um, strategy group and then the, for the Formula One Commission, you know, and just to get uh, simple things through those two two um, um, yeah uh, rounds of, of, of powerful people, it's it's just impossible to 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 make any any changes to Formula One, and he realized that, and 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 he sees this eu investigation as, as one opportunity to to get rid of the these contracts and 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 get rid of the concord agreement and and for himself you know to get in a more powerful powerful uh, position again to to make the changes that he thinks are necessary to get formula 1 on track again i don't know what kind of stuff he is in his mind again uh, to make <laughs> formula 1 more attractive or more uh, more entertaining for for viewers i have no idea what's going on in his mind but um, yeah he he wants he wants those manufacturers to uh, yeah to, to become less powerful to to get those just these structures that he created himself you know he's yeah. he's only to blame himself and that's the and, point and, he made he this that. happen he did it himself yeah. and he sent he created a contract that lasts for 10 years yeah <laughs> that now <laughs> he wants to be to a bad idea but but but, but he, he, here's the thing and, and this is something again that i'm taking from uh michael schmidt Mm -hmm. he, he said, and, and I agree 100%, that this is just the mentality that the guy has. Michael Smith said that the way that Bernie likes it is if he's jumping from one problem to the other, to the other, to the other. That's how he runs his life. That's how he runs his business. He wants to be, he wants to be putting out fires. That's how he knows how to, because he thinks that if he want, if he can make a deal here and a deal there and like backstab you here, offer money to you there, you can solve all the problems. But really, you're not solving the problems. You're just creating more problems for the future. Yeah, it, it, but you know, if you if you if, if 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 there's like a dictatorship, you know, with Bernie and <laughs> he, he's he's deciding anything here. And then he sees, he's, oh, it's, it was the wrong decision. And then, you know, next race, we will have another decision. We had that, you know, in, in former years, you know, when there, we had this, this qualifying uh, discussion already, I think, 15 years ago or something like 2006. that. 2006. They tried out. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, ten years ago, they they tried out different things, you know. In, in within two or three years, they tried out I don't know three oh, yeah. or four modes of qualifying, you know. And then they changed anything, you know, with refueling and stuff like that. Every every season, you had some <laughs> some new uh, big regulation <laughs> changes, you know. And yeah, yeah. but you, I, those I were the max that, mostly but, days, so. Yeah, but Bernie got gets criticized a lot, but you know he he really he built this this Formula One you know from really from scratch and made it a, a worldwide professional sport. So you it's not just you, you you if you look back at him and you, you you just can't see this this old man you know that has once and there a, a stupid this stupid idea about racing you know like. Um, watering the track or make uh, shortcuts for, for drivers <laughs> <laughs> to get overtaking a bit easier. easier. He's, you know, he's, he, he did a lot for the for, for, for Formula One and, and um, you, you have to you have to appreciate that as well, you know. Oh, no, one, so. one hundred. Yeah, Bernie took the sport from the mess that it was. It was uh, each each country Here, where they oh, went oh. to. Had, had of its course, own. he was look, he was looking after himself as yeah. well uh, yeah. too, you know, with the, oh, with yeah. the money, <laughs> making, oh. making a lot of money for himself. But you know, um, all the teams are making much more money nowadays than they did uh, 40, 50 years ago, and the attention worldwide is, is much higher now, and the, the professionalism is, is much, much, much better. But of course, you know, no, nowadays Formula One maybe uh, needs needs uh, needs a different kind of governance. You know, we saw that. Um, we heard the drivers with their with their letter, you know. Oh I'm not sure if that's the right way, because what I hear is that drivers also want to want to have a seat on that's that's their the master plan, you know. They want a seat on the what on the, the World Motorsport Council, table, you know. What, do they want a seat at the mo at, at the World Motorsport oh, okay. Council or or the strategy group? No, at, at least in the Formula One Commission. Okay. And yeah, but the Formula One Commission can the... they can they can't make any changes. They can only approve him or no. not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, preferable they want to want to see it in the strategy group, of course. You know that's where the <laughs> that's where the, the where, where the big decisions are made. The the the, 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 the Piranha Club. Yeah. 
I, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, you know, it's already yeah. too hard to have the, the manufacturers and the smaller teams in, uh, you know, in, in one group. And now you have the drivers and, you know, do it's, you, it's, do you know, like, have, have you spoken like personally, I'm sure you have with, with Alex verse, like Alex verse, he will, yeah. what, what, what kind of guy, like, what kind of a guy is he? Because I've seen from many reports is that he, he's very political and he, yeah. he, 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 maybe he has a direction that he likes things to go on he's gonna fight for that yeah i, I last talked to him in, uh, in in during a testing about those can uh, halo stuff you know not about the the last uh, the, letter, the letter they sent out last but there 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 are people in the paddock they believe he wants to become the next uh, next uh, jean tot you know he wants really to get, uh, you know in the he wants to step higher on the political uh, stage, you know, but I don't know, you know, really, he's, uh, he was a good racer. He's a, he's a nice guy, actually, you know, but, yeah. and, and you can see, you know, he's, he's, he's uh, looking after the, the interests of the drivers very much. You can, you can see that in, you know, in former years, the, the, uh, um, the GDPA was just, uh, uh, GPDA was just, uh, you know, it was maybe non-existing, you know, they, they met once in a time uh, here and there, but, but you, you hardly. They only, well, uh, they, noticed, they, they, noticed they never they never did political and, stuff. And they only with, did safety stuff, Woods, right? Yeah. With Alex Woods, they're much more outspoken. You know, you, you see they, they they might have a strategy and and, and and they want to voice their opinion much louder. So um, yeah, and and that's 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 the right they have. You know, because they are the, the the main attraction. You know, in the, in the Formula One race, the drivers are very important, of course, and and they need to be heard. I don't know if they're. If it's a good idea to have to have them be a part of the decision process, because I think we already have have enough parties involved in that. But yeah. um, of course, you know it's it's a good right, it, it's their right, you know, to, to voice their opinion and and, uh, and and to criticize what's going on in Formula One. But I I, I haven't heard, to be honest, I haven't heard any uh, you know constructive solutions um, apart from you know the qualifying to go back to last year's qualifying. Okay. And, but I, I don't have heard any kind of master plan, you know, what, what do we have to do to, to improve racing again? Because I heard last year there was this uh, demand for uh, more downfalls that, that, you know, they want to have those uh, V10 era back, you know, those, those crazy cars, you know, where you really have to fight and, and you know, driving like on rails, you know, and, yeah. and, that, and, now, and now, now they say we want to have less aero downfalls, we want more mechanical grip, you know, to... to to to, uh, to fight the cars more and, and you know so um i think drivers and they are not uh, they're not they're not they don't have a formed a, one opinion and you know about what what they really want to have you know so um we have to wait in which direction this one this goes but yeah you have you have to um yeah, to, uh, to to respect what they say and we have to, to respect alex words i heard he was very unhappy about uh, charlie whiting you know when charlie was uh, Saying that drivers are not involved enough in in uh, in those uh, uh, rulemaking process, yeah. they have a lot of opinions, you know, in uh, in those uh, working groups, uh, yeah. sporting working groups, technical working groups. There's always a, like like a like a seat, you know, for the drivers if they want to come to join, or uh, they can they can come to him during race weekends in his office. They can come, they can voice their opinion during those. Uh, driver briefings on Friday Friday evening in the paddock. They can as, tell their, as Senna used to do. Yeah, they can <laughs> about other topics, but mainly not not about uh, uh, how to make uh, the, the racing more entertaining. <laughs> but, but they can they can also go to their to their team principles team principles and say, hey, we we drivers want you to to vote in a different way, you know, uh, in the next uh, strategy group meeting and build pressures there. So there are different different ways for drivers already, you know, to to voice their opinion and 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 and. You know, uh, be active on the on the political stage, and Charlie Whiting was criticizing that they, they you know, they they in, a, in 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 recent years they they just didn't take this uh, this uh, this chance, you know, to be be, be more involved. So, uh, and I heard Alex Woods was 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 not happy, you know, with Charlie, you know, criticizing the drivers here. I, I but I don't know if uh, you know what uh, what is uh, what's right and what's wrong. If if drivers, you know, if they were involved or not. I just heard there was this invitation by uh, by Jean Trott during the winter break mm -hmm. in Monaco, and he invited all the drivers, you know, to have a get together with all the drivers in Monaco. And in the end, only two drivers showed up. So um, you know, and now they say that they're not being heard. You know, it's a bit uh, it's a bit tricky there. 
So um, yeah, let's let's wait and see if the if if drivers put more pressure more pressure on 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 Bernie and the FIA and and maybe also their teams. You know, if 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 nothing changes, you know, until, I don't know what if if they're really going on on a strike or you know threaten any uh, to do anything else. I don't know if they have the balls to to pull it through. <laughs> No, That's... no, they don't. They depend too much on their commercial contracts. They want yeah. to, they... <laughs> of course not. Maybe, the, the drivers... maybe button. That's nah, it. They, yeah, the drivers <laughs> are not going to strike. Yeah, maybe, maybe the old guys. Like button. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, can, I can see but... button, Kimmy, and Alonso not showing up for something. But no, nah, not even Alonso. Yeah, we, He'd run a dr- we, we had that drive. before, you know, in the I don't know seventies or eighties. Yeah. You know, when some drivers wanted to strike, and you know, they were always, you know, from the smaller teams. You know, they. Uh, you know, like pay drivers or something that they, they were told to drive and then they had to drive. You know? Yeah. So uh, to, to, yeah. to get all 22 drivers together and, and uh, you know, to, to to form a union, you know, so for something like that, it's 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 very hard. But, you know, I, let, let's see. That Maybe they surprise us. We He's... saw them in there with their dinner, you know, with their. Yeah. Nice yeah, 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 yeah. In Shanghai. yeah. But after at, the, at, know, at, but after, at after the kitchen, the racing, have you been to the kitchen? Did you go to that restaurant that that, that, that no. they were at? It's called The Kitchen in, in Shanghai. It's it's, it's a, this Italian restaurant. Oh, it's I, supposed to be pretty I, good. I, all the time I went to Shanghai, I tried to stay as close to my hotel as possible, you know. And, <laughs> was 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 the was the air quality better in your hotel? Uh, no, but uh, the you know the traffic's always uh, terrible. You know to go outside True. and yeah, taxi yeah. drivers, you yeah. know they don't understand English and they. they <laughs> Then the problem is if they drive you, if they drive you to a, a certain direction, you know, and you want you find another driver to to get you back to your hotel, you know, you don't, you never get back to your hotel because they they don't know where your hotel is, you know. So <laughs> you, you you better go to some restaurants they where can where you can walk to uh, the next uh, restaurant and not not go too far away. <laughs> how's 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 the how's the pop? Oh, well, actually, I guess you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know how the public transit system works in Shanghai at all. Because I know that they had some, they apparently had some metro lines that only work yeah. to the track, but they don't work any other time of the year. It's just for the F1 weekend. Uh, no, to, to be honest, we all, um, uh, in, in, in last years when I was there, we always had a, had a, a hotel that was closer to, uh, to the, the city center. And we always had a shuttle driver, you know, that, that brought us yeah. every day to Media the track shuttle. and collect us there. Yeah. So and but now my 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 uh, my colleague that was uh, there. What uh, what's his he, name? He, 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 Andrew something. Andreas Hopped. Andreas Hopped. Uh, yeah, yeah. Follow, follow him on Twitter if you're listening to this. Yeah. Andreas Hopped on Twitter. Yeah, on the, he's <laughs> there for the website. He's doing I don't know I think uh, eight races this year. So oh, nice. he's uh, nearly as much as I. So we split it more or less in half. You know. Yeah. Then we have another colleague. Here. She's a girl, but she's only doing three races. But she's also very nice. Yeah, so we are we are splitting the those races because we all we also have to do uh, other races like Formula E and endurance stuff and, and and German endurance race German endurance racing so endurance racing so um, yeah to do all the races so we need a, at least one of you at each race yeah at least where yeah. do, do, yeah. do have you gotten into Formula E have you been following Formula E. Uh, only, only on the uh, on television. To be honest, I now will go to the to the German Formula E race, so to to see it in in person. Have to say, I'm not from from what I saw on television. I'm not much of a fan, you know. <laughs> um, but maybe it will change, you know, to if I see them up close. It I seems no in the I next. Have no, no idea. It but, seems in the next couple of years. Every year they're gonna slowly open the. Uh, yeah. They, they started yeah. almost all the same car, and every year they're sort of opening the rules up for allow each team to how, build, how refre- build more parts themselves how refreshing is that to see is is is, is a, an fia sanctioned formula that their whole deal is that they're going to open the regulation more is is isn't that like <laughs> come on that should be the future of f1 why aren't they we, we talked about we talked yeah. And, and same, people talk about the way it. the robo race is going to go. Yeah, it's, it's going to be more, more gonna start closed, more and open, more open, up, open, 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 open. Up open. Like, is is that not what? Like, what? Why all this over regulation? Yeah, in Formula well, One, look you at have Formula to, yeah, in fifty yeah, years you know, from if, now. If you if you <laughs> let them do what what they like, you know, they uh, engine it, um, it will become too expensive, you know. And if if the, if you give engineers too much freedom, you know, to invent certain stuff, you know. The bigger teams, teams with more money, will always win. Yep. I, I don't know if we want to see that. True. You know, 
I, I don't know. That's you know, there are, there's always two sides of this, but, this but, thing. You know, but what, in the seventies, in the seventies, Ferrari had better facilities and and more and more money than any other team. And yeah. still, um, Collins with if, with Lotus came and kicked yeah. their ass. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But then this was the seventies. You know, nowadays True. we have computers, computers and wind tunnels yeah. and you, Google. They, you, you know, you know, you saw the <laughs> you saw uh, the the last good ideas like like the uh, the double diffuser or the blown diffuser or mm. the, they were all aero the stuff, stuff like that. You know, um, it, it's it's now a couple of couple of years ago. You know, we saw those kind of things. You know, in 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 like like last year or this year we you don't see those crazy solutions anymore no. those those in, inventive stuff that could make really make a difference you know cars, yeah. uh, stuck. cars stuck. more or less look like same and i don't think it's it's because of the regulations it's because you know they all have the, the same the same tools you know like uh, cfd and, and and wind tunnels and you know it's just it's just like that you know you can't you, you can't reinvent the wheel you know it's, <laughs> it's true yeah, yeah. I, I would I would like to have cars to look a li little bit more uh, more different, you know, um, with the with the regulation that were proposed, you know, for for us for next year uh, by Red Bull, we we might we we, we could have maybe we could have seen that, you know, because there were um, on the floor they had some uh, some some more freedom, you know, to uh, to to um, to shape the floor in in different ways, but yeah, with the latest compromise, we they got rid of that as well, so. Probably yeah, I, I had a question. The... I, I was wondering what your thoughts on on the sort of the future of the design of these cars, because there's a lot of talk about going back to the good old days and that sort of you know, these larger rear uh, engines, uh, larger tires, larger back wing or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But I mean, wider. that that yeah, wider, wider essentially. But what about the philosophy that like to move the sport forward, you should sort of be looking ahead with technology as opposed to sort of looking back with nostalgia being like, no, yeah. this is what we need to do. Cause like I'm new to Formula One, but I want to see like a sci-fi looking Formula yeah. One car. But I'm not sure where that that fits into that. I don't think it's going to happen, but I'd like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I I too. I think Formula One has to has to change uh, the shape of the cars. You know, um, cars. In my, it's just a personal opinion. You know, maybe yeah. there are some fans out there they they love those cars how they are. You know, right, actively. right. But I think cars are if you see them in in person and if you compare them to to cars from from past eras, they are so long nowadays. You you, you won't you won't believe it. You know, cars are I don't know five meters long. They are really long and and, and <laughs> yeah. slim. So you need to get the cars you know back to uh, to get them shorter and wider to make them look more aggressive and mm. and then. I, I don't know if you saw last year's the uh, Ferrari's concept car for the future, you know, which, yes. yeah. which, wow, which yeah. was was a bit futuristic, you know, with the, yeah. you know, the, the, the wheel covers and stuff like that. You have to find a, a good balance, you know, because every rule change makes develop, the development um, more expensive for the smaller teams, you know. Right. right. Uh, maybe you have to find different solutions to, to get a more health, healthy Formula One first and then reshape, the, make, make a big revolution, you know. You have to, what, what's clear. You have to make the engines uh, cheaper. You know, mm -hmm. have a, you have to find a cheaper engine uh, formula. Get rid. You have you, you can have the hybrid hybrid engines, but you know those MGUH stuff and and, and this complicated yeah. complicated engines. It's 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 just a bit too much. And hence, but Toby, Toby, you know, won't get anything out of it. Toby, how 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 easy wouldn't it be? You know, like if if <laughs> if I was Mister FIA or Mister Formula yeah. One Strategy Group. How easy would it just be to just just to say, hey, listen, you know what? Forget forget all this MGU this MGU that. Forget all these regulations. What we want, like you know, the 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 overall thrust for that when it was proposed by originally um, uh, by Max Mosley and then it carried on to to Jean Todt, is to make an engine that would be more efficient, so that it would be relevant for road car technology. So why don't we just say, listen, why why isn't the rule that you have to have an engine that is at least 40% thermal efficient, at least, and it costs, you know, this much, whatever, 12 million bucks, 25 million bucks, however much it is, set it at a price and at a minimum thermal efficiency so that yeah. this year's engines will still fit the budget, will still fit the requirements, but then there's more room for, I don't know, to put a jet turbine into one engine, you know, whoever, like wh <laughs> whatever gets the job done of being at least 40% efficient, if not more. What's stopping that? 
Yeah. Money. I don't know if you can if you can achieve the the forty uh, the, the efficiency goal goals with you know with the simple kind of solution you know for <laughs> I don't know 10, 10 million euros or something like that. But you you could you know you can you can have hybrid cars you know uh, hybrid engines you know in with maybe like standard cars you know just to say yeah. hey look we are doing here something you know with batteries and future technology you know it doesn't have to be this mguh stuff which is really crazy you know and until you find something like that on road cars you know you will have, have to wait 10 or 20 years you know at least or you will never see that because it's just too too expensive for normal road cars but the the thing with the price price tag that's uh, yeah that, that that definitely was a was a was a fault a mistake by uh, by the fia and john todd admitted that they should have uh, given the, the manufacturers a price tag to uh, to say that the engine uh, that there has to be a limit on that, uh, maybe 12 or 10, 10 millions, you know, and then Mercedes still could have gone on, gone on and, and developed their, their engine for 200, 300 million, you know, yeah. and, but they, they lose, they, 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 it would have clear they, they lose money, you know, if they uh, um, invest too much money in, in that develop, uh, in the uh, development process. Mm. Yeah, but that, that's clear that, and, and that will be the future. And I, and I think that this will go through this week uh, uh, for the 2018 engine so the, the price tag will definitely go through and we will I, I think it will stay there for the future nice. the problem is that we that we won't have the you know that the, the, the engines are still too complicated till 2020 yeah and um, so that we won't see any other manufacturer come in uh, come in formula one and 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 you know so uh, teams like red bull you know they can choose uh an, a manufacturer that's like equi are capable of building a, a, a good engine, you know. But the engines, uh, the engines will be more equal, you know. Uh, by the end of this year, at least, you know, yeah. we will we won't see that big gaps between the engines like we have seen in uh, in, in last year or still now. Uh, in in Canada, we will have the the big Renault uh, upgrade. Wait, wait, wait. Where, where? <laughs> in, uh, Montreal. Yeah. Yes, Montreal. And the Canadian yeah, Grand Prix. At, at, at least, at least this is this is what's announced, you know. And uh, with Renault, we we got we got some disappointments in, in recent years, but you know, I, oh, you, uh, you, you mean Tag everyone Heuer? You, everyone you talk to, they 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 still they're, they're pretty confident and and they they have high hopes in this engines. It's thirty five horsepower. I heard it's the increase, but it's not only the power increase; it's also the drivability should improve a, a lot there. So I think, uh, yeah, you can you can expect from Red Bull uh, a lot from Red Bull after that one, if the if the engines are reliable. So you have to be you have to be a bit uh, more careful with that. But yeah, it, it goes goes in the right direction, and I think in by the, the engines will will be much closer, and maybe it will not be so much a, a so big a, a talking point like it's it, it's now. You know. Yeah, we'll it should be exciting for us. That should be exciting. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, hang on a second. So I, I know that like up and everybody knows that the Red Bull has a, a Renault engine. Everybody does, but they're still calling it a Tag Heuer, this and that. What it is is there an actual difference uh, in between the Renault engine and 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 the the Tag Heuer engine? They, they get like as as soon as Renault the works teams gets a new update, you know, in tokens of the um, of the power unit, uh, Red Bull gets it too, right? Is that is that yeah. how it works? Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, they, they, there's no there's no uh, uh, separate development. You know, they, the car, the, the, the engines have to stay the same. It, it, it can happen. It can occur like last year with Mercedes that they have an upgrade for, for the engines and then and they test it first with the works team or they test it first first on the Red Bull team. You know, you, you don't know if, if they're um, in the, in the uh, process in the, in the process of, of manufacturing the upgrade parts, you know, if they can't uh, make make enough parts for for all four cars. You know, they they might say yeah, we we just try them out with with the with the Renault cars and then Red Bull gets them on uh, on the next race. You know, okay. that can happen. We saw that last year with Mercedes. But it, you will never see that uh, uh, Renault will uh, upgrade the turbos now and then you see Red Bull upgrade. I I, I don't know the uh, another part of the engine. You know, it's it's not allowed. The okay. the, the development of of the engine has to be. The same, you know, different different uh, stages of of development uh, are allowed, but uh, after 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 Re Renault got gets the first upgrade, uh, Red Bull has to get the same upgrade, you know, not okay. a different one, you know. So okay, uh, they, they 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 will, and I I don't think uh, Renault will uh, um, 
will have will have delayed upgrades for for Red Bull here. You know, they they got criticized a lot in last years. You know, and and they can you can clearly see which which is the better car. And they yeah. even even if there's the Takoyer Takoyer badge on 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 the side of the engine. Um, you know, they, they still want, everyone knows that, that there's a, Ren a Renault yeah. under the bonnet yeah. and they will, uh, um, they will do anything to, to make the car quicker, uh, Renault. And, and what I've heard, uh, the relationship between, uh, the Red Bull guys, you know, and Renault guys, it, you know, it's, it got, got really, uh, improved a lot, you know, from the beginning of the season and, and Red, uh, Red Bull saw that, that they recognized that Renault is doing a lot, you know, with now with in increased, increased uh, budgets and, and. Um, yeah, more structured uh, um, factory development, you know, stuff like that. Um, you can, you, and we all expect to have uh, a big, big, big improvements at, at Renault uh, coming this year and, and uh, for next year. Also with Mario Elian, you know, yeah. helping them, mm -hmm. helping them a lot in, in different areas. So yeah, I think you can expect a lot from you, maybe already this season, you know, in. In later stages stages of the season, because you saw that in 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 China with the Red Bull car, you know, mm. um, they um, they 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 got rid of the arrow, you know, they they put twenty percent less downforce on the car uh, as they would have run normally, you know, just to just to to get uh, on par uh, in top speed, uh, top speed wise, you know, with yeah. the other cars, and they were still the quickest in the corner. So you know, it just <laughs> when they have the power, you know, the right power. Uh, yeah. Uh, on the on the straights and then can they can run the downforce they have on the car, they will be really quick, you know. Well, that's why Ferrari didn't want to <laughs> give them the, uh, the, yeah. uh, the 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 current engine. And hey, Mercedes too. But but, but you will. know, but Ferrari has also great potential with the engine. You know, I I, I think we wrote that in uh, in Bahrain already or before Bahrain. Yeah. Uh, their turbo issue, you know, they have uh, they realized during testing or during the first race that they they built actually they built a good. Uh, Good combustion engine, you know, that can can take a lot of that that needs a lot of air or can take a lot of air, you know, to to, to give a lot of power. Yeah. And now they realize the turbo is not capable of getting enough air to the engine and get enough power to the MGUH. So they they have they had to modify the uh, the turbo, and and then they and but even with the you know uh, and they couldn't get uh, enough power for the end uh, for the end of the straight. You know, they had they could only boost the MGUH in in race mode until you know half half of the straight and then the car would not accelerate anymore you can see clear that see see, clear, see that clearly on the gps measurements you know all the teams could see that and, and uh, if they when they solve this problem i don't know what the uh, i heard they they will they already um, uh, used in the first tokens now for uh, for for russia i don't know if that's for the turbo or for for another part um, to solve this problem but you know, if they solve this, they could easily jump jump ahead half a second uh, per lap, and yeah, with with with, ju with just you know this one modification. <laughs> and so Ferrari fans, uh, can, they can look forward to. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Racing I mean I, any anything that adds like more excitement to to the to the top end of of the grid because yeah. the middle there's enough action in the middle already. I mean, yeah. come on, yeah. there's a lot yeah. of action. But if there's action at the front and the middle, that would yeah. be amazing. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But we haven't seen we haven't seen yet what what Mercedes is capable of. You know, they they we, we saw it with Lewis in you know trying to to, to get to the front to, after bad starts or other other incidents. But with Nico Rosberg, you know, he was just in uh, on three uh, all the three races. He was just in cruise mode. You know, yeah. Uh, he he he, Took he, off. he hadn't showed us anything. You know, so I don't know what what Mercedes is. You know, what what they have in in the still in the pocket. You know, um, if if Ferrari really starts uh, the challenge then. come on you guys yeah. you guys you guys are very like you, you you're very close to mercedes you're in stuttgart <laughs> there what's what's the word in town they still have more performance right they still have more power than they've shown yeah you can uh, every time you know like in, Bar in bahrain during the qualifying you know every time ferrari got a bit closer you know you can see with the next run you know yeah, yeah something like they switched you know a, a different engine mode you know, a bit higher and then they, they got the half, the half second back the half second gap back in place you know but i'm um, um uh, engineers are looking very confident and but they always won you know won ferrari's getting closer getting closer but they did it last uh, two years already you know <laughs> and you get a bit tired of all, all those warnings you know with ferrari and you don't believe them anymore um, <laughs> yeah but yeah. but i would i would love to see uh, ferrari back in the back in the uh, in the hunt you know they really challenging them and also red bull of course you, the more the better you know it's it's really yeah, yeah. 
at least it's it's not like not not that I'm uh, you know I'm German and a fan of Nico Rosberg, but it's already good that that we have an, a, a different winner, you know, not like not true, the same winner, like yeah. not, not like Lewis. if it, if if Nico would have won last two years and now it was it would have been Lewis Hamilton, I would have the said same. the same, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, that was something I wanted to ask you actually: is how big of a Nico Rosberg fan you were. <laughs> I, I like him from you know I like in you know from from a professional point you know he's a bit uh, he's also a bit cautious you know in interviews you know trying yeah. to, uh, like when he was at Williams you know he was uh, he was uh, and he and he admitted it he was much more outspoken you know he, I remember it was 2009 it was my first year in Formula One all the time he came to the paddock I asked him and Nico. Um, where where do you gonna end on Sunday? And it was on Thursday. And he said, Ah, oh, this race could look good, looks good, and I will I will I, I I feel I will go on the podium, you know. And it was when it was when Williams was, you know, like maybe it was top top ten, but he most <laughs> finished most places between I don't know uh, eight and fourteen, you know. And he said, <laughs> yeah. oh, this race I really feel like going on the podium. You know? and, and you're not you're like oh, oh you're oh, very okay. optimistic, you know. And you, and you could write that, and you had some you had a good quote here and there, you know. And then when he got to Mercedes, you know, he was a bit more, you know, uh, getting better. He said, yeah, I'm working for a big comp uh, company now, big, like Mercedes, you know, you have to be a bit more careful what you say. So for, uh, from a professional standpoint, you have to like Lewis a bit more, you know, because he, he just says what, what, he, what he thinks, you know, and, uh, does, does what he wants. And so uh, you have to, he, he from, from uh, as a journalist, you know, you you, you normally you need more more people like like Lewis Hamilton because, yeah, because much absolutely. much more stories emerge from uh, come out of, come out of people like that you know generating like quotes snap, as you're saying and and doing doing stupid things from here and there you know but you have to like it you know it's, yeah of course I will, I will I will never criticize him for doing stupid things you know it's always it's it's maybe it's not my lifestyle and I would maybe do it differently <laughs> but you know you have to admire it, uh, his openness and 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 how how he gives fans insight into his life you know. And he does, you know, if if you see him partying stuff like that, you know, in uh, thirty years ago with uh, James Hunt or in, in the seventies with James Hunt, you know, now all all people uh, gl are glorifying those days, you know, with James. Oh, they were smoking on the grid, and you know, they were partying and yeah. women and, and and stuff like that, you know. And now Lewis Hamilton, you know, he gets criticized for 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 doing similar things, you know, uh, right. not yeah. care. He's not. He doesn't care about what people think, you know, and, and doing his own thing. So um, I will not criticize him ever for, for stuff like that. And mm. I, just, I just appreciate how, how, open, he, how yeah. open he is. Any race that you're looking for? Well, actually, hang on a second. Because mm -hmm. I, I want to just bring something up about a race that I'm sure you're looking forward to. Uh, because we talked about it. Is, and I'm sure you're going. I don't know. I think you're going. Baku? Yes, Baku, I'm going. Yeah, uh, are you, I'm are you, always I'm going to the to, if there's a, a race on the calendar for the first time. Do you uh, do you, do, do, you, do you get do you go around the the automotive sport office and say like, mm, what new race can I go to? I'll take that one. I'll take that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're always doing. You know, we're doing is uh, doing the calen the calendar together. You know, um, yeah. uh, choosing the races because <laughs> there's always there's a Le Mans on the on the same day. So. Yeah. Um, and right. To be honest, I I don't like those twenty four hour races, uh, so I uh, I'd, I'd rather choose 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 other races. It's the same with uh, with uh, Monaco on the same day. There's the the biggest uh, twenty four hour race in Germany, and I have my I have my colleague like Andreas Haupt. You know, he's always he's always going to that race, and he knows the people there. Because I, I don't know anybody there. You Is know, that those, a, the uh, Nürburgring? Yeah, the yeah, on the Nürburgring, yeah, the, the GT race on the Nürburgring, and. It's it's so different to Formula One, you know. If you get used to uh, the access to the people, you know, and those, you know, it looks it's it's much more familiar, you know, those paddock, and you have to know those people very good, you know, and and there are much more cars, you know. If if you're not used oh, to it, yeah. you, you you get lost. I was there two Multiple times, classes. you know, and I said, how can you work in this environment? You know, you have to really, really, it's it's so so different from Formula One. So I, I prefer going to the Formula One races and uh, let let the other guys go to. Go go to those races, you know, like like Le Mans and, and the twenty four hour race on the on the Nurburgring. Sure. I will do the Formula E race in in Berlin instead. So sure. maybe that, that's that's a nice. Uh, what do you, what are you really thinking about Baku though? Because I feel like yeah. a lot of people are uh, just criticizing it or think the track is gonna be shit or 
this this kind uh, this country doesn't like racing or it's just, no, just no, kind he, of stupid criticisms he, that he, 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 here's here's what a lot of like western media are saying the, the, is uh, they're saying oh the, this country they're not even in Europe why are they hosting the european yeah, grand prix that. this this country they're more aligned with the views of russia why are we supporting this <laughs> but anyways i i just want to say i'm, I'm excited yeah, I'm excited <laughs> yeah. too. I, I want to. I, I'm I like always the, I like the track. To a new good. place, you know. Maybe after a few, even before my first China race, of course, I was excited. Or or, or Russia, you know. It's it's always good to co- good to go to a new country, and and you, you shouldn't go there with you know with something in mind that people yeah. won't probably what they won't like it or or it's not, they don't have tradition. Of course, we have to that that. That's out of the question, you know. We have to keep like races like Monza and Monaco yeah. and and Silverstone, you know, those those traditional races. We, we, we you know, that it's, it's yeah, that it wouldn't be Formula One without out, out those races. You, you you cannot just go to Baku and and China and I don't know where, you know. You have you have to keep those Brazil, Australia, those countries, you know, that that have ever been uh, in in Formula One. But you know, once once in a while, you know, why not try uh, try those. Try those new new venues like like last year with Mexico, you know the yeah the, the, the fan the fans How good was that? the atmosphere was great, you know it was it was a big party. Wait, you know, were you was, there? Yeah, yeah. Sure. How cool was it that? Was, yeah, it was a great event. You know, it was. I, I can only say good things about that. Apart from the overcrowded uh, uh, trains, you know, to the track, they were they were <laughs> terrible. But uh, but the race, the race, the track. Also, the track was you know with the stadium section and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But coming back to Baku, you know, the 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 track. It's actually it look look looks pretty cool. You know, it it's definitely yeah. definitely it's something different. You know, from what we what we uh, had in in recent years. You know, there's this the, the longest trade on the on the on the calendar. Yeah. The longest trade we have right now. This, this, and then we have the the, the section to the, uh, around this around the the, the old town, you know, of, of the Parkway. narrowest section on the circuit. Yeah, the, the, the turn narrow, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it looks it looks crazy, you know. It looks <laughs> like yeah, it looks, big. They have a big hill there as well as a big big yeah, it elevation. Goes, yeah, it goes up and down. The ocean, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. I told I told I, I talked to to Hermann Thielke, you know, who was oh yeah, the, was, the designer, the, 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 the build, you know, they they have to pave the there's uh, how you say do you say cobblestone? cobblestone, cobblestone yes. Yeah. The, the yeah. stones on yeah, the track cobblestone. they have to, to 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 put tarmac on on that and then they have to after the race they have to remove everything and we were, next year just before have, we talked to you we were looking at that on youtube they put down like a wood like wooden panels underneath or ah, they're like a yeah. fiber panels i guess and then they paved over that no yeah. actually yeah. That, that was one of our questions for a long time like whether whether or not they're gonna re- so they are gonna remove all the tarmac after yeah yeah, yeah. wow the and then yeah, repave no, no, next no, year of course they're there were road sections, you know, public roads. Yeah. And yeah. then they, they, they put new tarmac on there and then it, it will stay, obviously. But the cobblestone. But also all the, all, yeah. And then like with the cobblestone, they will remove, remove it. At least that's, that's, that's hundreds of I, years that's, old. That's it's, crazy, man. That's a huge, huge project. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> also with like, the grandstands, all the grandstands and the, 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 the pit building and everything will be will be just uh, it will be built for the yep. race and then it will be removed afterwards you know is that the, is that the way like, for the, of the like future thinking. is that is that the way of the future for f1 because a lot of people have been talking about how maybe temporary tracks are the way to go that's what bernie even because said. no because nobody can afford to have a permanent facility anymore not even the states the, like like yeah. circuit of the americas is in trouble 400 something million dollars yeah, to, to build the track. Me, it depends on the country, you know. With some, with uh, with some tracks in some countries, you probably can do it, and, and in other countries, maybe there's. You have from from a, from, a uh, from the fan point of view, you have to good, have to have a good mix, you know. You, do, yeah. you just can't have all all street races, and you don't have to, or just just normal uh, circuit races, you know. When, I want to see a bit more more variety. Mix of it. Yeah. When are we gonna go back to the notch life? Yeah, because it's it's been imagine yeah. building that today. It's yeah, be, it's been maintained almost a hundred years now. But to build that today would be maybe a billion dollars. Maybe more. <laughs> Twenty four yeah, kilometers. It's, it's, it's just not possible, you know. All the elevations and uh, you don't have runoff areas, you know. Unfortunately, you can't even. It's still can't very even, dangerous. Uh, even no. if you do uh, show runs, you know. Uh, I, I think there was BMW was doing one ten years ago or something like that. You know, Nick Heidfeld was running Heidfeld, on the yeah. Nordschleife. They had to. Uh, put the suspension you know the, it's very the, high up yeah very high up there yeah, and, and everything you know so the car was a bit undrivable and uh, you know they have so it's the the, 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 the the tight corners and and stuff like that blind blind corners and it's on my bucket r- 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 list r- r- to ca- go drive ca- a lap carousel like 
Have you I driven a lap yourself? Have you been yeah. there? What's, what's the fastest you've done on, on, on the Nor <laughs> the North Life? You, you broke in seven yeah, minutes? I, I haven't driven my, myself, you know, being <laughs> on the wheel, but I, I, I drove with Adrian Sutil, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With oh, his, wow. he had a Porsche GT2. Nice. With, uh, 620 oh, wow. horsepower. I'm jealous. I've, 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 I've driven a lap with him, and it was just crazy, really crazy, because he was, you know, <laughs> Do like... Do you feel like you were going to die? Like a, yeah, you know, he was sunk, like a sunk roller coaster. On, you know, uh, short, short trousers, you know, the, this, this crazy car, you know, and it was overtaking motorbikes and other cars, you know, in, and within traffic, you know, driving like, oh uh, uh, like, like, a, you know, they, they were just like objects, you know, and I was just <laughs> near, near misses everywhere, you know, it was, <laughs> it was really crazy and the car was so, so brutal. <laughs> then I was, I was, once I was driving with uh, Brand Mylander, you know, safety car oh, driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a Mercedes C63, I don't know if it has, I think, four, 500 horsepower or something like that. Somebody on my street more... has one of those. Excuse me? <laughs> Somebody that lives on my street has that car. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it, it's rear-wheel drive, and uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, nice. it, it was raining that day, and you know, oh. we were just sliding and drifting all around the Notch Life. And oh, my God. <laughs> it, was, it was also a crazy experience. But if you guys come to Germany one day, I will take you to, to the notch level with my partner. Oh, I'm Let's coming. We'll, it's on my bucket we'll, list to, to go around we'll one lap. <laughs> I, I have to go. But I have to train before that on, on the PlayStation. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That, I've, only, I've only did it on uh, Gran Turismo. On a video game, I've gone around a few times. But <laughs> I'll do it in real life. That's <laughs> my ears plugged. That's amazing. Oh, I, honestly, as, as, a, as, a, as a fan, uh, just going back one, one time to Baku, like... Uh, Go wherever F one like it. Sports has nothing to do with the politics. It shouldn't ever be involved with like international politics. Yeah. Go 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 wherever you want to go. But I, that's still, at the end of the day, there's some things. There's something that that shouldn't be touched. We shouldn't. I mean, you know, a lot of people make a, made a big stink like like what we talked about uh, when when the French Grand Prix was lost, a manicure or whatever. But. <sighs> Let's be honest, Manicure was not that great of a track. Yeah. Don't touch, don't touch Spa though. Don't touch no. Spa. Don't like, no. you know what I mean. The, the the really historical tracks for a reason should stay, and there should be there should be at least come on, there should be at least a few races in Europe, no matter what. Mm. Yeah. Just just for right. the history. And I, I always uh, think that uh, places where you see a lot of enthusiasm, enthusiasm by fans, you know, a lot lots of fans in attendance. Yeah. Um, they also have a right to stay there, you know, because right. um, it's it's like like with Mexico or, or other places, you know, even China now, you know, in China in former days there it was a bit, you know, here and there, you know, the a bit bit uh, empty on the stands. But this year, from what I've heard, you know, you can see you can see a, a big improvement there in China. You see know, some people, flags, you know, and this, people are excited. Yeah, seeing yeah, yeah and there's and a Raikkonen fans. Maybe, yeah, of course, right? Uh, <laughs> the, the, the biggest part, you know, it's the biggest uh, fan favorite. But uh, yeah, but you know, it's it, it seems that Formula One is is really um, is getting bigger in China. So, so uh, definitely deserve their their place on on the on the calendar right now. With yeah. with Sochi, you know, we, I think it's still still to be seen. Yeah. I, I don't like the track, to be honest. It's it, it doesn't look good on TV, you know, the photographers also, they don't like it because, you know, they, you always have those fences, you know, in your way and and it looks a bit like a construction site, you know, only from the, it only looks good from the helicopter, you know, when you when you see those nice buildings around, but, you know, the those cameras from uh, ground level, you know, or, or even the onboard shots, it looks a bit, you know, it looks like a Formula E track, you know, with all the, all the, the, the cages, you know, the, yeah. the fences. Well, there's hope for Russia because there's been this talk about maybe moving to Moscow, abandoning Sochi and move to Moscow to a street circuit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Could to be honest, happen. I don't know. I, um, with the, I heard with the ruble, you know, the ruble, um, the, 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 the local currency, it's, it's, yeah. it's going down. So uh, <laughs> Formula One, it's, it's getting, uh, it's getting um, uh, more expensive for, for Russia. Every every year, you know, every year the yeah. currency goes down. It gets more expensive. They have to pay Bernie more in, in in U.S. dollars, of course. And you know, they there's a lot of of course, you know, if if your economy goes down, it's yeah. the same like we see in in Brazil, you know. And the, the Grand Prix fees with Bernie, they're you know they're pretty high. And if you have countries like Azerbaijan, you know, they don't they just don't care about the fee or they pay whatever you want. 
um, you know, other countries they get under a lot of pressure. You know, if they, if they can't afford it, you know, and even a country like Russia, you know, they now had the race for I think three years now, thirty thirty year now, and uh, I, I I think fa the, the fans there there weren't so many fans there and. They make they made a big loss uh, last year, so I I don't know how how long they how long they uh, stick with it, but we will see. You know, there yes, there's always talk about new races like, you know, we had it with uh, Las Vegas and California and South Africa and uh, in in Seoul we had it with the street race. Last, that's what I heard last year. So well, apparently, yeah. uh, Kailami in, in South Africa is you know yeah. rebuilding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were renovated, renovated. Yeah. And and Malaysia too. Jeez, I, oh, uh, I mean, uh, Toby, you, you've been you've been very generous with your time. It's already. I, I just noticed. I honestly hadn't looked hadn't looked like too too carefully. Yeah, but it's been it's it's nine o'clock. It's nine nine thirty in in Stuttgart. Uh, ten thirty. <laughs> it's in yeah, Central European time. Um, no, ten thirty. It's already. Or, yeah, ten thirty. That's what. I'm, oh Jesus, yeah, ten thirty. Uh, in in in, no in, in Stuttgart. As as a closing thought, uh, I I just wanna uh, just your opinion uh, for the rest of the year yeah. is it, despite all that we've talked about all the negative stuff and and stuff like it, it's it is there a future for Formula One is is the world <laughs> of the future like can it accommodate a sport such as Formula One? I hope so. <laughs> I'm earning my money with it, so I'm, uh, <laughs> If it all goes down, it would be pretty bad for myself. But uh, no, uh, so I have to say no. I, I'm, I, I definitely I have the opinion, and you can see that you know with on Twitter and and everywhere. There's so many diehard Formula One fans still, you know, and it's still still one of the biggest biggest sports worldwide. You know, mm -hmm. of course they are making life life their their, life, their their lives hard themselves. You know, with with some stupid decisions. You know, also Bernie and and the teams. They have to pull themselves out, self out there, you know. They have, they try have to try to avoid those negative, negative uh, headlines and to, to to get, you know, to uh, uh, when when we are, when we are over now with with this week, you know, and the regulations are set for next next year and the engines regulations are set for 2018, and I think until 2020 it could be a bit calmer, you know. The racing is good. What are we going to talk about? Are good. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I think Formula One is not it, it, the, the crisis is not not as big as people people are are, are saying. You know, yeah. it's of course the, the viewing numbers are on, but but I think it's still a great sport and it's entertaining. It's, it's highly entertaining and um, and I yeah, think it, also with the, with Mercedes, the Mercedes dominance, I hope I hope and I see I see them as I said Ferrari and Red Bull getting more involved in, in, in that and now with Nico Rosberg and I th I'm sure Lewis Hamilton will, will will come back you know he will be nice. even yeah. more angry you know and, and <laughs> yes. we'll, we'll fight back I'm, I'm sure of that and I, I think we'll have a good season um, this year who's, it, who's gonna win in Russia? Ha, huh, that's 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 <laughs> that's a difficult one you know if you if you saw last, last two years you know actually uh, in uh, Nico was was pretty quick in in in, in practice sessions and qualifying and and he was challenging Lewis a lot you know in yeah. in uh, 2014 I think he was second and and he won the start and then he did, did he outbraked himself in the in the first corner and had to go to the pits and lost the race and last year of course that he had this this this, this uh, throttle uh, pedal problem right, 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 while, yeah. while leading the race and yeah. yeah I think he likes the track actually so it would it wouldn't be a surprise. If he if he wins the the seventh seventh race in a row, wouldn't surprise me. But uh, I think come come Monaco and uh, uh, Barcelona and Monaco, we will see Lewis Please. Hamilton. Back. Yeah. You, you guys have any 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 closing questions? Yeah, j finally here. I got to, just before you called us, we put out on Twitter if any fans had any questions. Um, this guy humidly yeah. on YouTube has two related just about your profession. You just asked. Yeah. Uh, when, when you're when you're reporting on a race uh, around technical stuff, talking to drivers, team people, general coverage, race qualifying, just what, what's your favorite F1 topic to cover? And uh, separately, uh, what affects like what you're writing about? Is it the fan interest, or is it more like uh, do you have a directive for what what kind of stories you're writing about? No, no, not at all. We are completely free uh, what to write about. Of course, you can. Yes, you have to write about what's happening, right? 
Yeah, no, uh, no, no, we, we don't have, you know, my, my boss don't tells me we, I, we need a, a fettle story each day or like, no. <laughs> if, if I, and if I would just look, uh, look after traffic numbers, you know, I would do a Michael Schumacher story every day. You know, <laughs> that is, that, that yeah, is in so. Germany still, you know, if you put the name Schumacher in the headline, you, <laughs> you know, go climb over his fence. It's a, it's a guarantee into his you know, to get, get high click numbers, but, uh, you know, I don't try to exploit that at all, you know, and I think real fans appreciate it, you know, if you don't yes, look yeah. after that. So we really try to cover all drivers, you know, not just the German drivers or not, not the drivers that are always in, in focus, you know, for sure, Rio Harianto is not the driver <laughs> uh, that we, that we cover the most, you know, like, like Lewis Hamilton, but you know, it's, uh, I, I always say good, good stories can come from everywhere, you know, and, yeah. and if there's a good story out there, we will, we will do it. We, we, we criticize everyone, you know, if, if it's Ferrari with a, we say if there's an engine problem there, we say it, and you know, even if we know the next day they're denying it to, to other <laughs> other websites, and yeah. you know, it's 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 always the same game. But um, yeah, well, and, and for sure, that's why we, that's why we like reading your stories and talk to you because yeah. you guys keep it yeah. unbiased. Yeah, no, it's, it's 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 always the same. With Ferrari, it's a bit bit more difficult, you know. But <laughs> I hope I hope that that readers appreciate it, you know, because I always you know we're writing huh, like. In tech, we were the first, you know, to 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 hear about those engine troubles, and we wrote about it. You know, we were very careful. We didn't want to criticize Ferrari at all. You know, we just just wanted to say we hear about, you know, there were several engine cha engine changes and and reliability problems. So we wrote about it, and of course they. And then I, I read in, in got a lot of feedback on, on Twitter and in, 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 on message boards and stuff like that. Oh, uh, fans got angry, you know, and stuff like that. And next day, Ferrari was denying it. And then people, ah, oh, look, Ferrari was denying it. And you wrote shit and you lied to us and, you know, stuff like that. And, and then, uh, but after Kimi, you know, had that the turbo failure and yeah. uh, Zep in, in Bahrain, yeah, people are. <laughs> people come yeah they, they they knew that they, they even Ferrari couldn't couldn't hide that there's something going on with the fireballs with the shooting up. yeah uh, absolutely and but i guess the, the, the technical uh, coming back to your question the, yeah. the technical side in general is something i i like to to write about nice. a lot because in Ger or german readers you know they like it a lot you the know they, for sure. they, they, they like all those small changes on the car yeah. and why is this this happening and who is more downforce who is quickest in small in slow corners and quick corners and, and, and what updates are planned for next race and stuff like that, you know, that's what cool. our, at least our German audience, <laughs> from what, what we can see from traffic numbers uh, is, is most most interested in. And yeah, and to be honest, talking and talking with engineers is very, is, 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 very, is for me is a bit, it's more interesting than sometimes more interesting than talking to drivers because engineers, <laughs> they, they really, they're, they're not talking bullshit, you know, if you talk to, no, well, I don't they they must, they must like a, a lot of the engineers must love what they do. Like they really like love their job and love yeah. talking about technical stuff. And I don't know if it's like, if it's because, because 99% of journalists don't talk to engineers, you know, or, or if it's like, you know, cause, cause they really, they're, 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 they're uh, incredible, intelligent people, you know, and they have uh, sometimes a bit crazy minds. You know, if you, if you see Adrian Newey or something, but they are, <laughs> they, they, they like to, 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 to talk about what, uh, what they are planning and what, what, you know, how the arrow works, like talking to Andy Green by, uh, from Force India, you know, it's, it's, you always, you always go, uh, go out and say, ah, oh, this, uh, you know, uh, they, they, with the airflow, how the air is flowing and the, they're creating a vortex here and there. And this little bit is so important. And, you know, and, uh, you know, it's it's, uh, it's for me. It's 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 more. It's in many cases, it's more fascinating than having the uh, to talk talk to a driver and and hear the same quotes. You know, you you hear every Grand Prix. But that's uh, awesome. yeah, that's awesome. Well, yeah. hey, hey, th th thanks a lot, Thank man, for much. accommodating us. I, I know that you're you're probably just aching to go to bed because tomorrow you're going on vacation. Where, where where are you going? Where where are you and Claudia going? By the way, uh, going to Japan. Nice, oh, yeah. nice, yeah. nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. yo. Try some takoyaki. That's octopus balls. They're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously. I haven't tried that. Maybe, no. maybe I have tried, but without knowing. You know, I, <laughs> I, 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 I ate pre pretty crazy shit, you know, during, during the Grand Prix there. Because you always got, you know, you order some sushi or other stuff, and you get always get some kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, some from you know some some free meal you know from from the kitchen first you know and and it could be anything you never you have no idea what to eat if it's a snail <laughs> it's, uh, some mussels or some other in intestines i don't know, you know <laughs> squishy and, and 
but you try, at least I try it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you have to, you have to I, try I, it. I like them, like all of it, but you know, at least I tried it. <laughs> well, honestly, uh, uh, safe travels, all the best, and um, please, okay, this year we will keep to it. Uh, can we do another one of these later on? No worries, yeah, we will do. Just we keep in touch, you yeah. know. Absolutely, yeah. Towards the end of the yeah. season, hopefully we can like. I'm I'm sorry that that I can't I couldn't offer you the the, the solution for all the problems we have. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's all good. Hey, the people in the people in charge can't offer us any solutions to the problems. Yeah. So. <laughs> but I'm confident it will get better. Nice. I think so. Too. Won't hear so many stupid ideas anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kick Bernie out. <laughs> uh and again, uh. uh Toby, again, thank you, th thank you so much. Thank you for accommodating this. We will thank keep you. in touch. Uh, we will make another one of these happen. And uh, again, safe travels and all that. If you want to follow uh, Tobias Gruner, he's on uh, very accessible on Twitter. T, T Gruner on Twitter. T, T G R U E N E R <laughs> uh, on on Twitter. Uh, lots of good stuff. Lots of good pictures uh, for everybody. And uh, other than that, I guess uh, we'll see you later, man. Thank enjoy, you the, so enjoy the rest of, of your race in the season. Thanks, you. Enjoy Cheers. Good evening. See you. Bye. 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 Good night. Awesome. Beautiful. Awesome. All right, okay. Uh, that was a great conversation. Yeah, that was amazing. Thanks, humidly, for your questions. Hopefully, you stuck around to hear that. Yeah. I'll uh, send you a message if you didn't. And you can listen to the answer. Uh, other than that, I guess uh, we'll go for a short break and come back. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm about to pee my pants. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be right back. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for tuning into the interview. Yo, how good yeah, was that? That was fantastic. fantastic. That was a lot of fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Toby. We should we should have more Toby's of those. So cool. <laughs> we, we've been pretty solid. We did, like, four interviews in no, the last but, month no, or but so. Re remember how our plan last year was to have him, like, like like every like like three or four times <laughs> <laughs> that was our plan we were supposed to yeah. talk to him so we talked to him last year before before pra or or after practice and then we were supposed to talk to him again after bahrain but then a bunch of shit happened anyway whatever episode 57 oh. still goes on and we will have him later on honestly like we will we will do our best honesty viewers <laughs> great insight from toby mm -hmm. that was amazing yeah. Uh, he, yeah he always has the inside scoop but he hangs. That's great. He, he hangs out with like like. Just make no mistake. This guy like he. You saw like. Yeah, he's just the, talking the, about hanging out with Nui with the. Cause, who, who, all cause the engineers. That's what the people. German press does. They don't. They don't bother with this tabloid shit like yeah. following Lewis Hamilton like, around. What, they what go color to is this Lewis's hair this weekend? Yeah. Did he color his hair? Is he, <laughs> does he have earrings on again? <laughs> but, does he I, wear I, those earrings <laughs> in the car? You know. I think, does I, he I, take I, off that necklace <laughs> when he drives? <laughs> Fuck, that cares? must add an extra ballast. I, right? I think uh, from one of the questions that we got from uh, one of the viewers <laughs> about you know what what he enjoys yeah. most about the sport, yeah, uh, and, and because of his background being German and mm. and sort of the 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 German perspective on a lot of things is like how does something work? Yeah, and that's what I really enjoy about it. But like, uh, yeah, and that's his perspective, and that's a very sincere form of journalism oh, yeah. where it's like I. I just want to know the truth and and understand how it works. Yeah, and that just that's just breeds great uh, journalism. Oh yeah, and that's just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the yeah. stories that are just put out there just to fill a page. Mm. Like everybody what can see this, TMZ. I, no, no. But honestly, I think that we are at a point right now where like most people that, for example, are listening to this show mm -hmm. have access to the internet, have access to like the wealth of information that is out there. Mm. And you can discern. You can like even a baby can, man. Honestly, like you can you can look at a, at a at a front page and like if it's all like bright letters and like like let's show this guy's butt crack, like yeah. then you know it's sensationalist. Yeah. <laughs> what what Toby's publication and what they what they focus on is clearly not that. It's like it's actual real stuff, and you can tell. <laughs> yeah, the technical stuff. The deeper politics, yeah. not just like the sensationalized, out of context Bernie quotes. Mm -hmm. And actually, something interesting here that humidly, the guy who asked those two questions that we just asked Toby, uh, just said, he said, uh, by the way, his theory for the, why some of the tech stuff gets more, sorry, it gets less traffic from overseas, from our side, from mm -hmm. the West. Mm -hmm. He says it's it's tricky to read them if they're written in English. Never mind through Google Translate, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's Which a great point. Add a little bit of, of trouble. 
Yeah, absolutely. Like, Luckily, I can I can well, understand like thirty percent German or something. Yeah, I got so about ten percent on my. It on makes my it head. a bit easier to <laughs> to read some of it. Like sometimes I'll I'll look at it in English usually first, and then the stuff that translates weird, I'll go back in German and be like, and see if I can. Yeah. Because a lot of times, like the sentence is just structured backwards. It's like uh, in, Yoda, in the... Yoda speak. <laughs> yeah, that's, G- that, yeah, that's G- what German is. Yeah, German <laughs> through Google Translate is like Yoga speak. Yeah. Yoda speak. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> What's that right there? My girlfriend made this. It's like a little, it's a little Yoda. <laughs> right hook. Yeah, a little right it's, hook. It's a, sure. it's a, it's a toy Yoda, not a car. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's a cro- crochet yo- crochet yoda oh man i gotta somehow put this over here <laughs> okay ah oh, there it is but anyways yeah right it's, it's, smiling he is <laughs> <laughs> well done sir well done another language that kind of reads like yoda speak when you translate is russian Oh God. We're gonna be there this weekend. Yes, for a race. The I mean, F1. Okay. Formula One. Well, not okay. we. We won't be there. Well, no, we're not going to be there. Well, I, I, Jesus Christ! Like, if, I think if if we're doing our job right, we're we're probably gonna be banned yeah. from. <laughs> Actually, hang on a second, because there's one thing that I that I forgot to bring up when uh, <laughs> when I was talking to to- when, when we were talking to Toby. Uh, but one thing that I that I forgot to bro- to bring up with Toby is that he's so. Baku's coming up, right? Like we we're talking about Baku, and one one of the main stars, or like in their billboards or whatever, like they're promoting this big concert that's going on along with the Formula One race, mm. and one of the stars that they're bringing is Chris Brown, right? You know, no, or, no, this is Azerbaijan. Or sorry, Baku, Baku. That's what I'm saying, Baku, Baku, oh, okay, Baku, okay, Baku, okay. Baku, Baku. Sorry, Baku. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So in in, in Baku, they're gonna bring Azerbaijan, or <laughs> they're gonna bring Azerbaijan. They're gonna bring Chris Brown, right? Yeah. Uh, Pharrell as well. And, well, no, no, no. Well, Pharrell, yes, and Enrique Iglesias, and, and yeah, and Enrique Iglesias. But what I found interesting is that they are bringing uh, Chris Brown. And remember when we were talking about the as the Azeri Grand Prix or the European Grand Prix and in Azerbaijan in Baku, um, how to get there? You don't you don't know whether or not you're gonna be actually let in the country until you're there. You have to you oh, have to take shit. you have to take a leap of faith, fly to Azerbaijan, and then once you're there, the immigration of the immigration officials will tell you whether or not you're fit to enter the country or not. Right? Okay. Right. Wow. Right. Remember, okay. We we talked about a few weeks ago. Azerbaijan is actually setting up through the federal government yeah. a special visa specifically for people that are coming to watch the race. Oh wow! A special visa, right? Yeah. You, okay. Now, so l- l- this is a country that basically right now the way things are gone are, go- are going. Uh, if I say something negative about Azerbaijan right now, like mm-hmm. because this is going on the internet and whatever, and mm-hmm. like somebody could listen to it, um, I could be barred from entering the country, right? Wow. Right? No, I could. I could. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's very easily well, like they, from they any just, country. Yeah, really. yeah, from any country. Like, or no, 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 no. No, not really. Like if if you can, if you I talk can, about uh, Erdogan. Justin Trudeau yeah, well, no, come no, through we're, yeah we're, 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 we're talking about like ex, like like countries and you know with, with some shady legislation behind it but anyway like yeah, yeah. Abaku Azerbaijan you don't know whether or not you're gonna get in until you get there right mm-hmm. uh, and and they will let um, Chris Brown in which is which is which I find weird because a country that you don't need to find out whether or not you're coming to it, before you get there, for example, is Canada, mm. right? Right. And <laughs> you, you know who we d- who we in Canada didn't let in? Chris Brown. Brown. Because he is a convicted felon. He's a convicted felon. He's a convicted he felon. Beat up a woman. Yeah. <laughs> He's a convicted felon. Wow. And whether <laughs> whereas a convicted felon in for the a, criminal system for a violent yeah, crime. Yeah, for, for being a shitty person, a shitty human <laughs> being. Is not allowed in Canada, and this country that w- they're going through such lengths to not like to p- p- potentially not let people in, they're just letting that. No, no, just come on in, guys. <laughs> they're not just letting him in; they <laughs> invited him yeah. and paying him money, paying Co- him money to sing his shitty songs. Convicted like. felon, don't worry about it. As, <laughs> like, I, as, you know, as long as you're not saying anything negative <laughs> about us, never heard a Chris Brown song in my life. And I'm proud of that too, eh? <laughs> I probably heard one in passing, but uh, oh, oh, oh yeah, I can't, I can't ascertain whether or not I've been exposed to, to a Chris Brown song before. But knowingly, I've never. Yeah, but that's okay. 
Anyway, yeah. that, that's just something that I wanted to get yeah. off my chest. Yeah, no. <laughs> back in. Now, back to Russia. Yeah. Back to Russia. Oh, yeah. Let's, uh, we got a onboard. Yeah, let's take a look at this just, quick, just, I guess, just to kick this off. Put it in the background. A minute 44 on Hamilton's lap. What? Hamilton, 44, tattoo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then here's the onboard coming around. Oh, the uh, the telemetry is all cut off. I do, I it's do see the like front straight here, the first corner. What what Toby was saying that it's it it does some some of it does look it's like a bit like a flat. construction they did, they did site. This giant corner, which is pretty awesome, except it's off camber, which is no fun. You have to slam hard for this corner. That corner is alright. <laughs> But it, it it is a bit of an awkward. It, 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 it was like you said. It was, it was an afterthought. Trip. It was they first thought of the Olympics, and then they thought of um uh, of the race. Joe Sayward on his blog, um, he's basically linked the building of this track. Mm. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Because this part of the track's awesome here. This part's pretty cool. It's like uh, or here the, this last part you come up to like a multi apex but i think like this corner this track has 19 corners and i think eight or nine of them are 90 degree flat corners because it's kind of shitty si yeah mm -hmm. here, th this this part yeah. here is pretty is pretty sweet you get that and then sharp left again oh that's that's where the, I, the, I remember when we played this on the on the video up. game i kept going into that uh, that barrier over there to the left <laughs> yeah, this, this is the only cool part of the track where there's a couple you change yeah. direction left right left right through through a weave and then you go back through three more 90 degrees. So 90, 90, and then another 90, and you're back into the main street straight. They're sort of like 90s, or like pitched a little bit, but I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's pretty boring, right? It's kind of weird. It's like a tr subtropical area. They held, they built this crappy track there because they kind of had to. That was the place to do it. They held the Winter Olympics there. It's mm. subtropical. Right. All the skiing and mountain events were held like 200 kilometers from Sochi, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. I, I kind of hope I hope the rumors are true. They abandoned the circuit, let the stadiums collapse, and mm. just race downtown Moscow. Yeah. That would be pretty badass. <laughs> but Moscow is a city. Like When you see it on the ground, it's, yeah, yeah. it looks b badass. Old style, old school. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Cobblestone, Moscow, Moscow hundreds of year old buildings. It's, it's, it's one of those cities, though, that is um, it's, it's old enough that it, ha it basically has to be crossed by a river for it to be that old, right? Like mm. they, they were, <laughs> There were no other cities other than yeah. cities that would, like, either where they were either on the beach, like, by the, by, by the ocean, or, it's like, a by a river. Fat river right down the middle. Yeah. And, and so, so, so that's Moscow. Yeah. So the, the, the track configurations are definitely limited to, <laughs> to that geography. So you, um, but it's you can still probably make a kick-ass race down the streets of Moscow. Yeah, it's not going to be any worse. It's not, not? going to be any worse than Sochi, yeah. even if whatever nineties they have. They get think some whatever, elevation. In, think in whatever you Moscow. want of Russia and and their foreign policy right now. It would still be a kick-ass race. Um, I think people lose sight of what sports should be when they when they try to politicize it one thing that i didn't agree recently and i and i and i agree with a lot of what uh, uh joe sayward says is that joe sayward uh recently put on um an article on russia and like how he just doesn't agree with the politics of russia and this and that and and because he doesn't agree with the with the foreign policy of uh, president vladimir putin he doesn't think that that f1 should be should be involved at all in Russia, because of that, just because of that, Bernie Ecclestone, Ecclestone thinks Vladimir Putin should be running Europe and the world. Though. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit thing. of conflict of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's oh, yeah, it's. Oh, 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 all I'm saying is that it it is the job of things like culture, like mm. art, you know, uh, poetry, like human expression, music, sport. To rise above all that, yeah, man, and and to and to remind us that at the end of the day we're all just people, right? But <laughs> we're all just trying to figure out what yeah, the fuck's going on. Exactly, <laughs> politicians and the people who are trying to figure out that stuff, what's going on in that sense. Like, yeah. you can look at Brazil; they're trying to impeach the president. They already did. Yeah. They impeached her. Yeah. So there yeah, you go. Yeah. China, uh, China has bad human rights record. J Japan spewing out radiation. <laughs> uh, 
fucking if you, they go to Africa, they're extincting all these be- amazing animals. There's a, there's a million reasons to not go to any. You can come up with reasons not to go to Canada or the United States or hey, Great man, Britain or I, you know. I, I mean? can, I can, yeah, I could give you a million and, reasons. Any to, like, I, 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 I could tell you right now that like going that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that, I I prefer to focus on like like the race. It's a yeah. race, man. Going to Russia for a race. <laughs> Russia has a lot of history. Mm. They held the Olympic, the Olympic Park. Pull pull up a map of uh, Moscow just to look at the potential. Because Moscow is a lot like Oops. Paris or a lot of European cities where it's it's built yeah, it's there. built in a circle, and there's there's not a lot of ninety degree streets there. It's it's got two fat rivers going through it really, but zoom in, zoom into like the their downtown you know? the yeah the red square is at the top of that that river loop there inside right in the center oh, of the circle. Oh yeah, there's like an island thing here going. On. I bet that this yeah. is a downtown. I think that's probably a man-made river split. Yeah, but maybe not. The the red square is right there above the top of that the here, here, that here this thing here there, yeah yeah that thing right not a little higher. Red oh red, red square right there yeah oh red square yeah there we go but yeah, so the Anyway, Ecclestone's idea was to run right through the red square, but any, you can see anywhere around here, anywhere around here, <laughs> yeah, has, they're curved it's going to have elevation, yeah. cornered streets, walls, uh, cobblestone, all kinds of badass stuff that you can la- lay out. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the red square. Let's take a look. Yeah, and the background here, the buildings, the old uh, wow. minarets, the towers, the parliament oh, buildings. That's just some weird ghost shit going on there. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, they're not parliament buildings, but <laughs> well, it's a, the Kremlin. Yeah, very cool. Uh, but yeah, no, whatever. Why not? I race through there. <laughs> why not? Yeah, that would be that would be like it's it's like bridging the gap in between video games and reality. Like you like you often like Mike. It's yeah, a, yeah it'll be like, it'll be like closer to Mario Kart. Mario Kart pulled some of this shit off where they like like race through castles. Why not race through this crazy cathedral? <laughs> Like I thought, like that was sort of like the original point of like of like going to different countries and different cities. It's it because is because of that. Yes, but if, if every place you go to is just some sort of uh, really static uh, circuit that's mm-hmm. never gonna really change, then yeah. like, what the fuck is the point? Like, what's the point of doing something? Like, and I, I get it. I, I agree with that view, man. Because yes, why not? If the if the whole point. And, and and I know that like you have has some conflicting views. If the whole point of Formula One is to keep changing where the goalpost is, if if it's a it's, it's a sport that allows itself the change of regulation, the change of location, whatever. Yeah, why not just pick somewhere flexible, somewhere where you can even one year have the race be like this way, and then the other year like. Add another reverse thing, it. yeah. Oh yeah, reverse, reverse it. it. Yeah, why not? Just let's just have let's let's throw these guys out and like actually put them like throw them in the deep end, you know? Because um, drivers are probably not gonna get much more performance out of themselves, maybe not uh, at a circuit like Barcelona. Mm. They all know it. They know it very well, and it's not gonna change. But. Like the only thing that changes well, around actually, it Barcelona is the cars. Barcelona actually changed in the last five or six years, right? Yeah, maybe, but maybe seven. it's maybe seven. Yeah, it's been a yeah, while. Yeah, but you know, once it's resurfacing changed. here, or whatever. But like, if you could actually like corner. change, like, no, like the last corners, corner, they changed two. It, cor- they added that chicane. Yeah, but it's it wasn't the same change though. For example, uh, Singapore allowed themselves to do with the Mickey Mouse corner, right? With that, with the Singapore sling, it it was a drastic. That was a drastic change. And changing the direction from like one lane of the bridge to the other, that was drastic, drastic change. Yeah. It changed the racing. You can do that if you look with at street circuits. And and Malaysia and, right now, what they just it's the, yeah. the circuit reached fifteen years old. They're like, well, it's time to change it for the next fifteen years. Yeah. They, and they they made it a new challenge. They reprofiled a few corners. Yeah. The same principle, but they 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 made it the circuit yeah. faster and more difficult. Yeah, no, and that's yeah, that, and and that's something that Formula awesome. One can afford itself to do, you know what I mean? And 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 why maybe not? And Russia, why not Russia it? maybe can't afford to do this though. Well, not yeah. Well, like that's, like that's yeah. what's unfortunate. The unfortunate part, <laughs> like Toby pointed out, the Russian ruble is going down. It's going to cost more. Mm-hmm. Even if it doesn't cost more, it costs more to them because of their money is going down, etc. Right. etc. And it looks worse now to abandon the circuit that they built. They spent hundreds of millions. Of yeah, them. but <laughs> Russia's like, Russia's abandoned yeah, a yeah, few ex- things. Exactly. Like <laughs> ask ask any Russian official. Like like 
do you care if this like like do you care about this and they will like whatever x is do you care about x whatever x is they will say no <laughs> oh, of no. course not <laughs> well, I don't know. do you want me to be honest no i'm not gonna care about that <laughs> 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 yeah. they're not they're not they will they, like if if there's a country well there's many but if there's a western ish country that will easily be like no we're not we're just not having a race there anymore like we don't need to save face to you yeah. <laughs> we just, yeah we're just gonna have a race in moscow what are you gonna do about it it's gonna be russia <laughs> <laughs> i hope so yeah. well, anyways, I, i'm excited for the race anyway it's a race it's a race i'm not the most excited of any race for this race i'm excited for the race though yeah Especially the way the season's been going so far, we got we can't still be- got to see what Hamilton can do. There's hopefully going to be a real fight with him, True. him and Rosberg. Ferrari's got to uncork. They think they're closer than they've gotten to show yet. Ferrari, okay. Williams, so- Williams did pretty good at Russia last year, if I remember correct. <laughs> um, Bottas got taken out there at the end. He was he was going to be on the podium, I think, right? Yeah. No, what are you looking at? No, um, so remember how, like, I, ha- I had kind of be like, talking about this earlier, but there is something, uh, like, like, just now that we're talking about Ferrari unleashing their, their power and all that, there is something that I have to say, because I, I was, the last time we, we got together, we were talking about uh, HCCI yes. and, and, and things like that, and it turns out, because, okay, so I guess... What I, what I said was something like, oh, Mercedes has been trying HCCI and Ferrari has to, like, recently and this and that. It turns out that specifically, specifically, the technology that Ferrari has been playing around with <laughs> is not strictly HCCI. Seems like a bit of a combo of HCCI is, no, and it, it, spark plugs. At the end of the day, it achieves sort of the same objective as HCCI. So you could have clad your arguments under uh, the, 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 the HCCI banner, like if you had said, oh, yes, there's going to be, so there's going to be increased uh, pressure in the in, in the combustion chamber, mm. you would have assumed, oh, so you're doing HCCI. And, and an engineer would have been like, mm, make, your, make your own conclusions. <laughs> and, 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 and the answer would have been true yeah. both ways because there there is increased pressure in the combustion chamber but mm. it is achieved a different way it's not HCCI apparently at least as it as it as it um as it, as it corresponds with ferrari because and, the h stands for homogenous right well one well that's one of the things and uh another thing that, that we were talking about actually was the getting rid of spark plugs and actually spark plugs still play as um, a, a, a role what what I found interesting about this whole thing is that um, so Ferrari, as an engine manufacturer, they have to manufacture the engine this and that, but it goes all it go it goes back to like the original problem that we were discussing even last year uh, in the preseason is that it, when we were talking about Haas back then even even last year is about what defines a manufacturer what is like because in this day and age. You're not like as big a company as you as you pro- proclaim that you are or whatever. Mm-hmm. You're not building every single part of that engine. You're not building every. You're not. Right. You're not. You're not taking like you don't have a blacksmith out back in Milton Keynes building each nail, each screw. You you don't mm-hmm. right like you. So so where do you draw the line, right? Yeah. Um, the way the Ferrari is approaching that liberty of like yes they can be the engine manufacturer whatever they're actually having help external from this company called uh mel mehle mela male male m-e-h-l-e this is german m-a-h-l-e oh sorry m-a-h-l-e male or mal or whatever uh it's um my mike in this show book yep uh it's this the first link yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The, the, these guys these guys just just leave it leave it there leave, leave this picture like in the middle okay yes yeah, yeah. can, can you zoom into that oh or some 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 way anyway 
I'll close that. Close oh, that. that's what that yeah. is. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so Mal or whatever actually uh, <laughs> went up to Ferrari in the middle of 2015 and was like, you know, you, you know, Mr. Rivabene, Mr. Marchione, we got a solution for what you guys are looking for. You get you, you guys want you guys want more horsepower, right? You guys want more horsepower. I can give you more more horsepower with very relatively little change to your arrangement that you have right now. And as a consequence of this, like of that conversation or whatever, what materialized was this, the TJI, the turbulent jet ignition. Well, a lot of people you you'd really have to like go out and like look for this, but this actually came out and we have Ferrari may have their power gains to like to think for uh, at the Department of Energy in the US because this was actually an init this came out um, as a result of an initiative that the Department of Energy and the states uh, put out to basically make, they basically put out a two and a half million dollar pl- price uh, for anybody to come up with a simple solution to extract more horsepower without making too many changes to the standard internal combustion engine. Oh, shit. If you if you scroll all the way up, like you'll see, like the headline of this argument is yes, two point five million from the from the DOE. <laughs> Eight point five million looks like. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah two and a half a year so spread yeah so they basically put this thing out like tender for anybody worldwide to just yeah. be like yo just come up with a clever solution of how can we how can we extract more power of the out of the, the regular engine the regular engine that right. everybody lo- knows and loves uh, and one of the things that they came up with it was this jti now let me let me go let me go back down to this image here to show like how clever it is and and and, and what like what they're doing so at the beginning, or right, or next week when we we're talking about this, we we said in general terms, basically that um, what they what Ferrari had had achieved, or what the Formula One teams all had basically achieved, is to put more pressure inside the main combustion chamber, so that the combustion would happen almost spontaneously, mm. as opposed to triggered by a spark plug. Right. right. So that. And and then, but then for that to happen, that means that the gas would be way more compressed, and when the combustion actually happened, it would generate way more power per explosion, right? right. And then it would, because of that, like then then the engine, the the engine engine, the, the internal combustion engine would be better at being an engine because on the other ends, like the the MGUH, the MGUK, the the engineers were basically being faced with a problem that was like. It was really, really complicated to like get them to go from the eighty percent efficiency that they were at mm-hmm. to like say eighty five. So a five percent efficiency would be gained more easily, like by still coming to revise the internal combustion engine. So right. what did what this did, and this this diagram actually kind of explains this uh, very elegantly. So right here, what you have coming down from there, like so right here at the very bottom. Um, is what you would have had before, or where you would have had, basically the uh, the spark the plug, spark, right. the, the spark, spark plug, head. yeah, right. yeah, the spark head would have come there. Instead of doing that, now you have this mechanism, As which, which, which basically is the fuel injector right there with a bit of air and just a little bit of fuel, mm-hmm. and this is a spark plug too. So there's fuel and air coming in from here. And there's also fuel and air coming in at the, in the main combustion engine right. or, or combustion uh, chamber. chamber. Yeah. Uh, but there's also a little bit coming in here. And then there's this little, little, little co- um, spark plug makes a little a little spark and creates in here basically a first explosion. Oh, like a little baby like one. Like a little baby explosion. Right. And then at the very bottom here, then they have like what what what, what they uh, term the, the JTI, the, 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 the jet turbulent ignition. They put the T here, the turbulence. So at the very end here, these hot gases that come out of that explosion. Right. 
so imagine right here like what what they're confronted is with like a, a cylindrical a cylindrical chamber that that uh, that holds the piston and the gas and and fuel right. or sorry and the air and fuel mixture right when the hot air from this combustion comes out because of the little holes that they put in it comes out in a on a swirl like that okay that makes like so this hot air <laughs> sorry so instead instead of the high pressure in the main combustion chamber yeah. what ignites the uh, the air and fuel mixture is the hot air coming from here that is being swirled around oh, fuck. Th from these little holes the so that it turbulence helps with efficiency of moving that air back out the exhaust afterwards it's if it's spinning yeah no no but but yeah. also because it's spinning the no this this is this see, is really cool see, man no what what happens is that because it's spinning what happens is that the hot air hits the walls of the combustion chamber chamber first and then and then the middle and the mm. actual spark then in the main combustion uh, combustion uh, chamber happens in the middle like in the center of it as opposed to like being like a like a whole thing kind of scenario like they have, everything explodes the explosion actually gets controlled to like the middle of it and because it's not starting anywhere near the walls it so makes it it makes it more reliable more efficient and reliable yes right <laughs> you're not burning oil on the end edges and you're not you're yeah. not burning the actual metal of your piston this rings. is very very clever i clicked that link the other link the other link that was under the same heading on the uh on For the sure. book yeah, yeah. And it, and it shows like a more detailed of like so where this part would be and it seems like ferrari is ad adapting this technology because this technology is uh, i think originally developed for diesel engines for trucks because uh obama in the united states no but he here's he no but he, that's the kicker because this is not for diesel it's, gas. Yeah, no, it's, it, for, it's for regular like originally I, this technology was for it because if you didn't know right now in the u.s and because it's in the u.s the rest of the world Stuff like trucks, uh, big trucks, diesel engines, train engines, uh, big pickup trucks, w work vehicles. There's no emission standards for those vehicles right mm. now. <laughs> they was like, yeah, just, just, yeah, just let's, fucking do whatever. Let's make Honda Civics and like small cars seem really good and everyone will be happy. Don't worry about the rest. But th this is moving in that. But they, I guess they've obviously Ferrari's adapted this for burning gas at 15,000 RPM. But no, but you, you know what you know what else is good about Highly volatile this approach gas. is that you can implement it with relatively little change to your standard engine right now. Yeah, they can get it probably get away with this using less tokens. They actually last and last year actually so it came out from um Males or whatever. Uh um, I looked up the reports. pronunciation is Mali. Molly, yeah, yeah, that's what so, I found online. Okay. So, so from from Molly, um, for, they basically have to disclose all their shit that they did last year recently, and they said that, especially because yes. they're trying to win a government contract with this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they basically said that yeah, like it was like they called up Ferrari and they said we can implement it in your car and make it make it like run in a in a certain level of efficiency and keep working on it mm -hmm. as soon as. Like within the next maybe handful maybe, of weeks. maybe by Russia? No, 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 no. They actually approached Ferrari last year. I know, but like, they might um, get this done for this this coming weekend, right? This might dude, be introduced. They, up, up, no, dude. Up, Have they been using this? Yes, uh, this technology in some way, shape, or form, or at least building up to it, has been present in the Ferrari engine since last year's Canadian Grand Prix. That's uh, why we saw the Ferraris up there. Remember, and we remember. Like if you don't, if, if if you remember, like we noticed this, we were like, we weren't expecting the Ferraris to be as strong last year. Yeah. Because because I Canada. Do, I do remember that. Yeah. Because Canada, like it's it's power, power intensive. Power hungry circuit. Very very power intensive. Yeah. That's how they got there in Canada because they and 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 Mali Mali, Mali was able to provide them with a solution that was sort of adaptable to the engine that they already had right. very very quickly because this technology allows it. If they've been doing anything since, is perfecting and perfecting and keeping this going even more efficiently. Hmm. I was gonna say it might be if I did, they didn't. Obviously, we nobody knew that. It would be interesting to see how the sound changed, but I guess it didn't change too much with like, having sort of a double explosion. Yeah, because th th this this so all close, happened so close, so close together the two explosions and the, and these all happened before the turbo, right? So 
like so, something interesting too like as i haven't gotten to go as deep as as you did obviously but uh the way that this burns gas because it burns super lean mm-hmm. it creates a lot less nitrous oxide because of the knock right so what what happens is that yeah. Uh, nitrous the, oxide for anyone that does it like when you well you're breathing right now the air you're breathing is like 80 something percent nitrogen yeah. right but nitrous oxide is very bad for the environment but it gets created when you burn gas together the oxygens nitrogens get stuck together so uh, this, I, this I, makes almost zero nitrogen nitrous oxide oh it. shit yeah uh, so nitrogen i have a question oxide. now is this sort of so we've seen sort of the ferraris have like these great takeoffs now is oh, this shit. is this yeah. part of is this? Because that, 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 that comes probably, to play like very early in the ignition process. Yeah, yeah, it's like it the, probably gives them a, a torque boost yeah. mm. from, from the get go. Yeah, because yeah. they really like. You're right. That is. Yeah. And then the Mercedes is like you just think the Mercedes are just gonna own, but they're more like long distance runners, right? In that sort of sense. Yeah. From what I've read about this too is that this ignition system behaves differently at different engine speeds as well. So if you're when you're accelerating and when you're at the 15,000 RPM mark screaming, mm. the the ignition process is different. So the, probably they have it optimized at the bottom for launches and torque. Mm. And at the top, they have it optimized for power and burning more air when the turbo's spinning 100,000 RPM. Right. And you went 300. I seem probably that's the, the HCCI that the word I said about being, that means homogenous charge. You have the same you have to reach the same pressure every combustion mm-hmm. because your fuel is engineered to combust at a certain pressure so that's what the homogeneous charge is you reach a charge and it ignites you reach a charge and it ignites yeah. so you have to reach that same compression charge when your engine's at 2000 3000 rpm at the bottom when you're launching mm. and when it's at 15 sure. but w- with this with this you can change the mixture and the spark intensity right and the spark there's, timing there's more fine tuning there yeah. yes yeah. yes yeah yeah so well they obviously they're gonna be playing around with this for years and, 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 the, and the, perfecting the, it, the engine mappings like it gives a lot more like yeah like how how soon do you do the spark because <coughs> sorry there there is um yeah, like, like, just like g- g- give me one second to find it just just so I sure okay so um the thing is that it allows for better controlling of the spread of the combustion flame and it delays the onset of detonation did so if it was just as, uh, as easy as compressing the fuel as much as it can go until it becomes so hot that it spontaneously combusts that's what then that that actually apparently doesn't deliver you the biggest efficiency the best efficiency yeah, right be, yeah the best efficiency uh, and and it's controlled it's, by the the knock the knock is what i guess in 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 the people that work in this field they call it that 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 detonation point and that, that that's when you ignite too early but you, they actually want the ignition to happen when the piston is still coming up yes because, right because it's going so yeah. 15,000 times a, a minute you want the explosion as the piston's coming up and yeah. then reach its max. The max explosion happens right as the piston is at TD, the top dead center of its of its turn. Yes, yes. And the, the, the timing is very critical and managing that but, pressure. But, but with, with this system, as opposed to HCCI, what it allows you to do is because because you can control how much gas comes in here etc 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 and 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 even even it. even the way that you drill the little holes these little holes these orifices the way that you drill them and the way that like you make them spew out with all that together you can control way more accurately when the knock happens when the onset of detonation happens the knock is what you don't want knock is when you well, no, no, detonate no, too no, early no no knock in general is the detonation right. the onset of detonation you don't want early knock you want uh, the knock to be as late as possible right yeah and and with this you can at least model it and 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 control for it more easily than hci and that's that's maybe what has given ferrari more of an advantage maybe mercedes though and 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 this is one thing that i have mercedes is ahead i think on the thermal recovery efficiency and and this is the thing uh molly molly 
Yeah. Mallet used Mali. to make. Okay, they still make the pistons for Ferrari. They used to make the pistons for Mercedes. They don't anymore. Mm-hmm. And Just saying. They they used to like as of last year. So, so yeah, I don't know. It's it seems with this this system you can control a lot better your everything. Yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. It's good because I think with the HCCI you have to control the piston chamber te- pr- pressure mm-hmm. and temperature and all, all that with your valves mm-hmm. with your valve timing with, you have to have variable valve timing they have to have their cams i guess if they're using either you, i'm sure they're using cams all that pressure has to be controlled with your valve timing whereas ferrari can keep it more consistent or use that as just another variable yeah because they can control <laughs> the amount of fuel the temperature the timing Map, the spark like, intensity like put it in your engine maps right like yeah so yeah like like change change a knob, a knob in the steering wheel and all of a sudden you're having more pressure in this little chamber here before it goes to the big chamber pre, pre and watch chamber. and and how, how is that going to change your drivability you know there's yeah there is more that you can play around with yeah big yeah, time big yeah, time yeah which is cool it's, this is this is very cool uh in terms of if you like effic- uh, efficiency and, and 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 the technical aspect of f1 yeah, that, I guess. that's awesome <laughs> um this is how ferrari wants to bring up the fight on on top of all the other political shit that they're doing <laughs> right right <laughs> um yeah. but but going back to russia actually like despite i mean not not despite but you know as a fan i'm still looking forward to russia i'm still looking forward to see even if it is the first boring race we've had this year. I'm still forward. I'm still looking forward to to seeing that because there is something to be said about a boring race, a race where everything goes according to plan for the winning team. Because then you really get to see how much further ahead of the field they actually are. So you, you, if if everything goes according to plan as far as Mercedes stands in uh, in in Sochi we are really going to see like how much far ahead of the field they are mm. i think so yeah it's going to be interesting unfortunately not the best track but like toby said earlier and like i've said a million times and we all said not every race can be the best race ever or has to be even yeah none of them have to be or sh- should be because then the awesome races are, are that much more awesome. Yeah. You can sit back and enjoy them, but that much more. I don't. Know, I think that's pretty much most of what I got this week. Hopefully on Saturday, uh, this weekend anyway, it's going to be a race weekend coinciding with the 2017 rules deadline signing. Yeah, hopefully it'll actually so hopefully stick we'll get, to that deadline. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a pre-race uh, segment on that from Sky or something, breaking it down. Hopefully they come to an agreement. We can uh, as as for the track itself or whatever. Like we know, it's still it still could be a challenging circuit, depending on the condition. It's still a long circuit. It's one of the longest actually. When when it got introduced, right, we were looking forward to it being like pretty long. Mm-hmm. So it's one of the longest. It doesn't have a, like the elevation. Doesn't have the corners that you're gonna wa- uh, wish to have, except for that that one that's off camber maybe. But, yeah, but even that should be uh, but on camber. Remember, last year it still produced an uh, okay racing. Yeah, there's some cool stuff. Yeah, right and maybe the tire strategy is gonna co- like it's gonna come to to play again where where it's going to be interesting to see the cars that are going to want to last longer. And these 90 degrees, like, remember these yep. 90 degree corners are, if anything, they're just hard on the tires. Yeah. They're going to be hard on the tires for everybody, mm-hmm. but they're still going to be hard on the tires. Yeah. And if anything, I complained about them a few minutes ago, but it's one of the only tracks that has eight or nine 90 degree corners. <laughs> yeah. So that's what makes it unique in the end. It makes it it's it's, uh, its own its own thing. And if you're anywhere, anywhere at all, Near Toronto. close to Toronto, you can see it with us at Betty's. We're gonna be showing the race this weekend, this Sunday, at 3 p.m. So from at 3 p.m. we're gonna have the pre-show. Then 4 p.m. we're gonna show the race. Come out. 
Uh, join us at Betty's. Have pressed we, nachos. Honestly, have pressed wings. Yeah. They got bone shaker on tap. They have so many beers on tap. They have rotating taps as well. Cask beer. They have cask beer the British way for our British fans. <laughs> um, and, and, and that's happening... Uh, Sunday. This Sunday at 3 o'clock at Betty's. Look, us, uh, look it up on the website. Flatoutfever.com has all the information. Other than that, I guess... Um, you know what? We'll, we'll we'll leave us with I guess our predictions of of the winner of the race. I wanna I'm gonna go ahead and be first and take that from you guys, and I'm gonna say it's gonna be another Nico Rosberg. Yeah, I think Rosberg's gonna do it. He's oh, gonna be super man. pushing that seven. That seven. I'm going with the seven. return of Lewis. All right. I hope so. This Honestly, I, I do hope so. <laughs> yeah. I do hope so. And I'm not I'm not betting against it, or I'm not pushing against him, but. I do think Nico's what's pull what's it out. podium gonna look like? Ooh, okay. Here, 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 here. I'll give it Ni- uh, Nico Vettel Ham- Hamilton. No, I, I I'm gonna give it Ma- maybe Nico Nico maybe Massa. He's been fucking pushing too. Ninety degree corners. Who's who's good at who's good at slow corners? If not the Red Bull, I'm gonna say Alonso. I'm gonna say Nico. No, Nick Nico Vettel, Danny Rick. Danny Rick. <laughs> Danny Rick. Maybe I got I got my uh, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I got my Danny Rick esque haircut this week. Oh, you sure did. <laughs> so I give him, I'll give him some extra power. <laughs> side to, side head to side head from <laughs> from above my ears to above his ears. I project my po- the power. All right, that's DJ, cool. D- put, yeah, click that button and kick us out of here. And we'll be right. back Tuesday after the race post yes. Russia. Yes. Seven days, eight days, eight days. Today's Monday. Thanks, Toby. Yeah, thanks, Toby. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll thanks, uh, thanks everybody. Next week. We, I'll feel the same. Mm-hmm.